hearing on uh, several uh, bills that uh, we are uh, tackling in this uh, joint committee hearing uh, with the Committee on Labor, Employment and Human Resources Development jointly with Civil Service and Government Reorg, Foreign Relations and the uh, Committee on Finance. We'd like to acknowledge our uh, uh, members uh, from the Senate uh, virtually present uh, with Senator Bato de la Rosa, Senator Bongo, our distinguished minority floor leader, Senator Frank Drilon, Senator Marcos, Amy Marcos, Senator Wingat Chalian, our majority floor leader, Senator Migs Subiri, uh, Senator Francis Tolentino, and Senator Nancy Binay. A pleasant uh, morning, uh, dear colleagues. Uh, we would like to also put on record that today uh, we are going to include Senate Bill Number 1949. This is the uh, certified uh, uh, measure filed by our distinguished colleague, Senator uh, uh, Bongo. This is uh, this was certified by the President uh, Kailan, uh, December 14, 2020. Uh, before we continue, we'll ask the Secretariat to uh, acknowledge our resource persons, uh, guests, uh, virtually present. Secretariat. Uh, good morning, members of the Joint Committees. Uh, resource persons invited by the committee are the following. From the Office of the Cabinet Secretary, Secretary, Secretary Carlo Alexi Nugrales. From the Department of Labor and Employment, Employment Secretary Silvestre Bello III, and Mr. Rustico de la Fuente, representing the various labor attaches and who is also the labor attache of Kaohsiung, Taiwan. From the Department of Foreign Affairs, Under Secretary Sara Lu Ariola, Under Secretary for Migrant Workers Affairs, and Assistant Secretary Enrico Foss, Assistant Secretary for Migrant Workers Affairs. From the National Economic Development Authority, Under Secretary Rosemary G. Edelion, Under Secretary for Policy and Planning Group. From the Department of Social Welfare and Development, we have Assistant Secretary Glenda Rilova. From the Commission on Filipino Overseas, we have Secretary Francisco Acosta. From the Presidential Advis Advisor on Overseas Filipino Workers and Muslim Concerns Office, Secretary Abdullah Mamao, and from the International Organization for, Mig for Migration, Mr. Troy Dooley, the Program Manager and Head of Programs. That's all, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Comsec. Magandang uh, umaga po. Uh, I just give uh, my opening statement. Muli ho, uh, ma magandang umaga, magandang tanghali. Magandang hapon, magandang gabi at uh, hating gabi po sa inyong lahat. Dahil live po tayo, yan po ang uh, minarapat kong pagbati upang maabot natin ang lahat ng ating mga kababayan saan mang sulok ng daigdig. One in ten Filipinos over live overseas. Kung nasa ibang bansa po lahat, nasa isang bansa po lahat ang ating mga kababayan overseas Filipino, ito ang magiging 91st most populated sa buong mundo. Mas malaki pa po kaysa sa populasyon ng Sweden, Austria, UAE, Israel o Switzerland ang bilang ng mga Pilipino sa iba yung dagat. Yun pong 2.1 milyong Pilipino na nasa, UA, na nasa Middle East as of June 2020, mas marami pa po kaysa 1.8 million projected population ngayong 2021 sa buong rehiyon ng Cordillera Region. Mas maraming Pilipino sa Japan kaysa sa buong Mandaluyong. Higit na mas malaki po ang populasyon ng Filipino community sa Canada kumpara sa populasyon ng buong probinsya ni Senator Aimee sa Ilocos Norte o maging sa Ilocos Sur. Today, there are Filipinos in every time zone, every continent, and every sea. The sun never sets on the Filipino diaspora. We are virtually the world's human resource provider from bedside care to, financial in to artificial intelligence. As we speak, Filipinos are digging oil from the frozen tundras to the blazing hot suns of Sahara. They run kitchens from restos with Michelin stars that pamper the rich to eateries that serve budget meals to thousands of laboring masses that grind the meal. Hospitals everywhere also benefit from made-in-the-Philippines talents. Amid the pandemic, 
Pinoy nurses are the world's frontliners against the coronavirus, caring for the sickest. It comes as no surprise as the Philippines is the largest exporter of nurses worldwide. Pati po ang mga classrooms sa Amerika, Thailand, Japan at Mongolia, napasok na rin ang mga gurong Pilipino. In Arizona, Filipinos feel teacher shortages as more Americans become increasingly uninterested in teaching jobs. Because of Filipino household service workers, men and women in many countries can raise families while pursuing careers. Saksi po ako kung gaano karami at kahalaga ang mga Pinay household service workers sa Hong Kong. Bumisita po kami doon kasama si Senator Gatchalian, Senator Zubiri, Senator Angara. Kaya ho, it's not an exaggeration to claim that pulling all of them will would uh, pulling all of them out would crush Hong Kong's economy. Because of Filipino professionals in companies, stores, factories, businesses and hotels, startups thrived and earned profits. Because of Filipinos overseas, our country are prospered, lifting many out of poverty. At present, 12% po of the national income is the monetized sweat of the overseas Filipinos. These generous remittances buoy our economy up, keeping it afloat in times of economic headwinds. Noong 2019, umabot po sa 1.56 trillion pesos ang kabuang remittances ng mga overseas Filipinos. Ito po yung pinadala sa banko at remittance centers. Mas malaki pa po ang halaga kung uh, kasama po dito yung personal na inuuwi o ipinapakisuyo sa kababayang umuwi sa Pilipinas. Kung bibilangin po natin ang pasok ng salapi mula sa mga OFWs na parang metro ng taxi, ito po ay 4.276 billion a day. 178.17 million per hour and almost 3 million pesos kada isang minuto. Totoo pong malaki ang ambag ng ating mga overseas Filipino sa gross domestic product. Tunay nga pong dahil sa kanila ay naisakatuparan ang mga pangarap ng kanilang mga mahal sa buhay. Wala po akong duda na nakatulong silang palakasin ang ating rango bilang happiest country in the world. Subalit pagdating naman po sa personal misery index, number one po sila. Money sent can, sent can be measured but misery felt can never be quantified. May invoice po ang perang padala pero wala pong resibo ang lungkot, hirap at pighati. There are metrics for the economic returns of migration, but there is none for its social costs. Hindi pa po uso ang isolation, isolated na sila. Hindi pa man uso ang distance learning, hasana po sila sa distance parenting. Missed routinely were not only birthdays, but the once in a lifetime chance to walk a daughter down the aisle or to bid goodbye to a dying or already dead parent or sibling. Wala pong salaping katumbas ang ganitong kalungkutan. Let me give you more figures. The pandemic that continues to plague economies around the globe displaced more than 520,000 of our OFWs. As of July 2019, there were at least 14,532 Filipinos reportedly languishing in jails abroad. 68 of them are serving life sentence. Add to them the countless OFWs facing legal, health, psychosocial, and financial quandaries. In Kuwait, at least three Filipino household workers died over the last two years. Sino po ba ang makakalimot kila Joanna De Mafelis, Constancia Dayag, at Jeneline Villavende na namatay matapos tratuhing masahol pa sa hayop ng kanilang mga employer? At dininig po natin ang kanilang mga kaso dito sa committee na ito. It is against this backdrop that this bill before us should be heard and weighed. Export of Filipino brain and brawn ought to be temporary quick fix and desperate economic solution. Pansamantala lang po sana ito at hindi pang matagalan. Pero nakakalungkot na ito ay naging parang permanente na na ating ginagawa ang pagpapadala ng ating mga kababayan. Bago pa po tumama ang pandemya, 6,092 na mga Pilipino ang sumasakay ng eroplano palabas ng bansa kada araw. Araw-araw, 6,092. Ibig sabihin, kada labing limang segundo, may isang Pilipino ang nawawalay sa kanyang asawa, sa kanyang anak, sa kanyang mahal sa buhay for greener pasture. We must consider the larger picture as we define and fine-tune these measures at hand. What is the role of the worker deployment in our economic agenda? What place does it occupy in the future of our nation? Shall we remain as mere merchandise in the global labor market? Or should we start harnessing out our best 
and brightest for our growth. In either case, how can we do so for the best benefit, for our best benefit? Ang pagbabalangkas po ng Department of Overseas Filipino o DOFIL ay hindi po simpleng reorganization lamang na parang lipat bahay ang mga ahensya sa isang bagong bubong. Hindi po ito relabeling exercise na mistulang pagpapalit lamang ng karatula ng pangalan. This legislation is not about workforce reassignments. Creating the DOFIL is about assigning new potent mandates that will empower the department and the constituency it serves. We will use the hearing, these hearings as a forum to review all laws about the rights of migrant workers. We will incorporate provisions that will give overseas Filipinos more protection from recruitment to repatriation to reintegration. We will enact a new division of labor among DOFIL, DOLE, and the Department of Foreign Affairs to create a synergy to serve the best interests of our overseas Filipinos. Let us have a fruitful, frank, and illumined discussion. Gawin po natin ito para sa isang maganda at mapagpalang araw o gabi para sa mga bagong bayani ng ating bayan. Sila po ang mga Pilipino sa ibayong dagat na patuloy sa pagkayod at pagsusumikap para matamo ang kanilang mga pangarap, pangarap ng kanilang mga sarili, pamilya, at para sa ating minamahal na bayan. Maraming salamat and may God bless us all. At this juncture, I'll give the floor to our uh, colleagues who wanted to uh, make an opening statement or uh, our authors. I can see our majority floor leader raising his hand. Uh, majority leader, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a short opening statement as one of the co-authors. Uh, Mr. Chair, we filed Senate Bill Number 1323 in cognizance of the immense contributions of our OFWs to our economy. Based on the 2019 survey on overseas Filipinos of the Philippine Statistics Authority, during the period, Mr. Chairman, of April to September of the same year, the number of OFWs was estimated at 2.2 million, most of which are working as construction site workers, cleaners, domestic helpers, with Saudi Arabia as the most power preferred rather destination. Furthermore, in 2019, Personal remittances of OFWs reached a record high of 300, uh, sorry, $33.5 billion, or the current foreign exchange rate of 48 pesos at uh, an equivalent of 1.6 trillion pesos. This accounts for over, about 9 to 10% of the country's gross domestic product in 2019. Kung ambag lamang ang pag-uusapan, malinaw na malinaw ng ambag ng ating mga OFWs or overseas Filipino workers sa ating ekonomiya ay hindi matatawaran. Despite their OFWs' substantial contribution to the economy, they remain to be one of the most underserved sectors of the country. Isipin nyo, they had to endure home homesickness from being away from their respective families. Tapos kapag minalas pa, ay they... Ay, they face, no, rather, physical and psychological abuse and maltreatment in the hands of their employers. You may even recall, the late last year, I was very vocal on the case of a maltreated helper by one of our own, our own envoys abroad. Ang kwento nung kasambahay na yun mula sa South Cotabato ay isa lamang sa napakaraming kwento ng pagmamaltrato ng patuloy na dinadaranas ng ating mga kababayan na nasa ibang bansa. We recognize the role of OFWs on the, what they play or the role they play in steering our economy. Batid natin ang napakalaking tulong ng ating mga kababayan na nakikipagsapalaran sa iba't ibang bansa para mabigyan ng magandang bukas ang kanilang mga pamilya. But it saddens me that we are not doing enough to protect them. It's not because our embassies and consulate offices are not doing enough, but there are simply more of our people out there than what our offices can handle. It is about high time that we have a dedicated agency to look after the well-being, safety, and retirement benefits of our hardworking OFWs. This bill aims to provide a more effective and efficient delivery of services to our OFWs by streamlining all functions currently being served out by various government agencies such as the Overseas Workers' Welfare Administration and the POEA, among others. With the creation of this department, um, with the creation of this department, we are finally giving our OFWs the importance that they so deserve by providing them with an agency whose main task is to protect the rights 
and promote the safety and welfare of our new heroes. Sa pagsasabatas ng Department of OFW Bill ay pagkilala at pagbibigay importansya sa ambag sa lipunan ng ating mga matatapang na mga OFWs. Mr. Chair, it is my fervent prayer that we can fast track this and with you at the helm of this very important piece of legislation, I am most certain that you will see the immediate passage of this bill for the benefit of millions of overseas Filipino workers. Maraming po salamat, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Majority Floor Leader. Uh, this juncture also, let me recognize uh, Senator Sherwin Gertzelian, who is uh, physically present and uh, very active in our uh, committee hearings. Uh, are there any other uh, members of the Senate who wanted to uh, make an opening statement, a short uh, manifestation? No one? Okay, we'll, we'll give the floor now to, uh, we'll allow uh, the, our uh, resource persons. Let's start with the CABSEC, uh, Carlo Nugrales, who is uh, with us today. Uh, CABSEC, good morning and thanks for being here. You're recognized, sir. Thank you, Chair Senator Joel Villanueva. Um, we have a presentation, Chair, if that's all right with the committee. Please, please proceed. Thank you. Uh, Chair Person, uh, Senator Joel Villanueva, Majority Floor Leader, Senator Meg Zubiri, Minority Floor Leader, Senator Frank Trilon, to the author uh, of this uh, very important bill, Senator Bongo. Uh, other senators here present, Senator Bato de la Rosa, Senator Francis Tol Tolentino, Senator Amy Marcos, Senator Nancy Binay, Senator Sherwin Gachalian, to my colleagues in the executive branch, Secretary Bebot Bello, Secretary Mamao, Secretary Nick Acosta, at iba pa. Uh, thank you for inviting us uh, to be with you in this uh, virtual public hearing to deliberate and discuss a very important piece of legislation that concerns our overseas Filipinos. Um, ito po yung pag-establish ng Department of Overseas Filipinos or DOFIL. Last December 15, nabanggit na nga po ni Chair Senator Joel Villanueva, President Rodrigo Duterte certified the necessity of the immediate enactment of Senate Bill number 1949 or the creation of a department solely focused on the needs of overseas Filipinos and their families. Senate Bill number 1949 is the result of a series of consultations and meetings among the executive agencies and represents the unified position of the entire executive branch of government for this measure. It is our response, our collective response to protect overseas Filipinos, especially ang ating mga OFWs, especially during this COVID-19 pandemic. And it is a great opportunity to really look at the bureaucratic um, dynamics and perhaps even these difficulties in coordinating the protection and the response initiatives natin para sa ating mga mahal na mga bayani ng ating bayan. This is actually a reset for the benefit of all overseas Filipinos. Ito rin po ang batas na magkukodify ng Philippines' commitment to champion and fulfill the 23 objectives of the Global Compact for Safe, Orderly, and Regular Migration. Nabanggit namin sa last hearing na ito baka ang Pilipinas po ang magiging unang bansa na magkukodify ng ating Global Compact, or GCM. Tungkol naman po sa rationale, um, nabanggit na rin ni Senator Joel Villanueva na we have 10.2 million overseas Filipinos around the globe. Together, they drive domestic consumption and account for 9.3% of the gross domestic product and 7.8% of the gross national income uh, last 2019. No? So current setup po natin, there are different agencies that have different mandates relative to overseas Filipinos, including those related to employment and those related to migration. Pero wala po tayong single agency kung saan ina-address po ang lahat ng concerns ng ating mga kababayan, overseas Filipinos. And uh, this COVID-19 opened up our eyes na kailangan ma-meet up natin ang challenges na ito. So... This new department seeks to streamline and directly manage all concerns of Filipinos overseas, plus their families, plus their dependents in the Philippines, 
and make our services to overseas Filipinos more responsive, efficient, and effective. Kanya na nga po, kitang-kita po natin dyan ang mandate and function ng proposed DOFIL. Promote the rights, protect the rights and welfare to formulate, plan, coordinate, and promote the policies to have a systematic national development program for managing, monitoring overseas or foreign employment and protect their right to decent work and fair ethical recruitment practices. Tungkol naman sa POEA, ang POEA at OWA po will form as attached agencies ng DOFIL and will serve to complement DOFIL and the specific technical service deliverables to this new department. They shall still form uh, as uh, they shall still retain uh, their mandate as attached agencies no, uh, of DOFIL. Pagdating naman sa usapin ng uh, right sizing, kita po natin that we have different agencies attached to different departments. But because of the right sizing, the need to right size, lahat po ng mga ito, o UMWA, SWATO, ISO, which is now called uh, the International Social Services Office of the SWD, ang UMWA is ng DFA, ang International Labor Affairs Bureau or ILAB is under DOLE, ang Commission of Filipinos Overseas is under the Office of the President, Ang Polo or Philippine Overseas Labor Office is under DOLE. The existing ATN units under DFA and the National Reintegration Center for OFWs under DOLE will now all form part of DOFIL. Yung budget po nila will all be subsumed under the new department. To reiterate, DOFIL is not creating a totally new agency. Instead, it will be an amalgamation of all key offices dealing with migrant, migrant workers protection into a single entity focused on that mandate. It will avoid overlapping functions. It will consolidate the budgetary allocations to a single public entity for a better and more efficient service to OFs and their families. These matters we all elaborated on during the December 7, 2020 Senate hearing. However, allow me to restate and to give emphasis that the creation of DOFIL will not be another big budget ticket item on the national expenditure program, but rather a right-sizing solution. Yung mga budgets po ng OUMWA, yung ATN units ng DFA, the Legal Assistance Fund, CFO, ILAB, POLO, NCRO, SWATO, which is now ISSO, all of them will be subsumed under the new department. However, POEA, which has a budget of 507 million, and OWA, which has a budget of 7.39 billion, will be treated separately from DOFIL because they are going to retain their individual um, uh, existence no? as attached agencies with their own respective charter. Pagdating sa proposed structure po, alam natin we will have a secretary and four undersecretaries and several assistant set secretaries, but not all of these offices will be needing new funding source kasi meron na pong budget for the CFO secretary, an undersecretary, several bureau directors in other offices, and plantilla items in the absorbed agencies. Pagdating sa bahay ng DOFIL, it can be temporarily housed at the CFO leased building or use the budget for the lease of the CFO building to pay for the office space of the new department. Further, the DOFIL regional offices may be temporarily housed in existing OWA and or DFA o UMWA desks nationwide. The proposed department will adopt a country team approach. No? We will have um, and the salient other salient features uh, provide for regional offices, an overseas Filipino Malasakit Center, uh, an assistance to the national funds. There are also provisions on migrant workers and other overseas Filipino resource center. And of course, that Congressional Oversight Committee, which will exercise oversight 
doon po sa um, new department. We will adopt a country team approach under Executive Order Number no. 74, Series of 1993, which provides that all officers, representatives, and personnel of the Philippine government posted abroad, including but not limited to trade commissioners, Commission on Filipino Overseas, attaches and trade information, labor, military, and cultural attaches shall on a per country basis act as one country team with a mission under the leadership of the ambassador who shall act as the team leader. Like I said a while ago, Mr. Chair, the department shall establish, operate, and maintain a regional office and such other low le lower level offices as may be deemed necessary by the secretary in strategic locations in the country considering the existing regional offices ng POEA at ng OWA. We will also continue to fight the battle against illegal recruitment. Um, alam na alam po natin yung nangyari noong February 3, 2021, itong taong ito, na may isang Tagalapulapu City arrested by agents ng anti-kidnapping group, Visayas Field Unit at ng Lapulapu City Police, na nagpa-promise ng trabaho as caregivers in the U.S. United States of America, inaresto na po siya with two counts of illegal recruitment and seven counts of estafa. In other words, even in this pandemic, illegal recruitment continues to be a problem and the DOFIL, in partnership with other government agencies and local government units, will cure that by establishing overseas Filipinos malak malasakit centers in strategic locations of the country to ensure prompt, vital, and relevant services to migrant Filipinos and their families. Ang mga servisyo na to will include acquisition of clearances and permits, validation of overseas job offers, reintegration services, and the provision of pertinent seminars and workshops for all their stakeholders. Yung assistance to national funds po shall be consolidated with the assistance to the Legal Assistance Fund and the administration of these funds will be transferred to the Department of uh, Filipinos uh, Overseas, no? yung DOFIL, mula sa Department of Foreign Affairs. And as I mentioned a while ago, the uh, proposed Congressional Oversight Committee will be composed of six members from the Senate and six members from the House of Representatives to continue to monitor and oversee the implementation of the law. To conclude, Mr. Chair, the contributions of OFWs and migrants to the country cannot be overlooked. Large remittances from about 10 million overseas Filipino workers and migrants is one of the many reasons for the Philippines economy to continue being relatively resilient, even despite global economic shocks, even despite this ongoing pandemic. Madalas sinasabi, sila po ang bagong bayani. Ikanga ng isang uh, decision ng Supreme Court through Justice Andres B. Reyes Jr. He wrote that it has been oft repeated that overseas Filipino workers are the Philippines' modern-day heroes. They brave the waters of the seas to provide for their families and to help boost the country's economy. With this proposed measure, Mr. Chair, dear Senators, we can provide the comfortable life that OFWs, migrants, and their families so richly deserve. Maraming maraming salamat po. Thank you very much, uh, Kabse Carlo Nograles. Let me also put on record and uh, remind uh, the body that it was the Senate who pushed hard for the uh, expansion of the access to uh, assistance to nationals, uh, uh, which we passed a couple of, uh, I mean, a year ago, uh, thanks to our uh, members of the Senate. We'd like to hear, I'm sure everyone would like to hear uh, from the Department of Labor and Employment. We can see Secretary Bellio uh, with the Admin Hans and Admin uh, Olalia. Uh, Secretary Bellio, uh, may we hear from you? You're recognized, sir. Thank you, the Honorable Joel Villanueva, Chairman of the Committee on Labor, uh, the Honorable Members of the Committees, the Honorable Senator Mig Subiri, uh, Senator Nancy Binay, of course, my former boss, Senator Franklin Deron, and 
may kababayan, Senator uh, Amy Marcos. Uh, hindi ko na po alam yung iba, Honorable Chair, pero may I just address yeah, I, I will try to help you, you Senator Bato De La Rosa yeah. is uh, logged in. Senator uh, Wynne Gatchelian is with oh. me here, physically present. Hi, Senator Wynne Gatchelian. Of course, my idol, Senator Bato De La Rosa. Magandang umaga po sa inyo lahat. And may I also address my co-workers in the Executive Department, uh, Secretary Carlo Nograles, magandang umaga po sa atin lahat. May, may I start, Your Honors, by saying that the Department of Labor fully supports the creation of the field. And we also fully support the creation or the inclusion in the creation of the field the agency or the Bureau, which is called the Bureau of Labor, International Labor Affairs Bureau. We have, however, your honors, just a simple request that our International Labor Affairs Bureau under the Department of Labor be maintained and its function, which we would like to enumerate, to be maintained under the Department of Labor, Your Honors. And these are the functions which provide technical and administrative advice to the Secretary relative to issues and concerns confronting the world of work that may have impact on domestic labor and employment policies of the Department and the latest and relevant international development in the world of work that may be adapted to local context in order to attract investment into the Philippines, which may subsequently result in the creation of decent local employment. Another function, Your Honors, is to help ensure that trade agreements entered into by the country are favorable to the Philippines and will benefit Filipino workers. It also includes the function to monitor the enforcement of the Philippine commitments and obligations with other international organizations like the United Nations, the International Labor Organization, the ASEAN, the European Union and other related multilateral and regional bodies through coordination with relevant government agencies and other stakeholders. And also, Your Honours, to assist in the implementation of the provisions of international conventions, treaties, and among, and among others, to represent the Department in the bilateral regional and multilateral fora to promote the interests of Filipino workers. With that, Your Honors, we again reiterate our support for the creation of the Department of Overseas Filipinos. Thank you very much, Your Honors. Thank you, Secretary Bello. I'm sure a lot of uh, my colleagues would like to ask questions, but uh, can we just give one more present? Uh, 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 statement uh, coming from the Department of Foreign Affairs. We'd like to recognize Yusek Sara Ariola, Undersecretary for Migrant Workers Affairs. Ma'am, you're recognized. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Um, Majority Leader Migsubiri, Minority Leader Drilon, Senators Binay, De La Rosa, Marcos, Terentino, and Go. Um, the Secretary, Capsec, Nagrales, Senator Be uh, Secretary Bello, um, and the other and our other colleagues in government. Um, good morning. Uh, we don't have a presentation, but we'll just read their statement because our presentation might be a reiteration of what Capsec Nagrales already said. The um, the Department of Foreign Affairs um, that is joining the meeting today thanks the committee for this opportunity to address. Uh, the issue of the Department of Overseas Filipinos. Mr. Chair, the Department of Foreign Affairs appreciates the rationale for the creation of the new department as the recognition of the Philippine government's solemn duty 
to protect the rights and to promote the welfare and interest of Filipinos overseas. Let me be clear, the DFA is fully supportive of the creation of the Department of Overseas Filipinos. For the past 25 years, mandated the Migrant Workers Act of 1995 to protect our Filipino migrant workers, the DFA has been at the forefront of protecting OFWs and safeguarding their welfare anywhere in the world. The DFA has made great strides in its assistance to nationals operations and delivery of assistance services to distressed overseas Filipinos, such as rescue and repatriation, setting up of shelters for runaways and distressed overseas Filipinos, attending to their illnesses and hospitalization, obtaining the best lawyers to defend their rights, and in several instances, settlement of immigration fines and penalties imposed by the host government on our repatriates. At the multilateral front, the DFA led the Philippines' active engagement in the negotiations for the adoption of the Global Compact for Safe, Orderly, and Regular Migration to protect all Filipino migrant workers against all forms of exploitation and abuse and guarantee decent work consistent with the President's directive that the Filipino is no slave to anyone, anywhere, and everywhere. The DFA is the lead leading the charge in the anti-Kafala campaign in the Middle East, where we are currently seeing labor reforms, particularly in Bahrain, Qatar, and most recently in Saudi Arabia and Oman. With the creation of the new department, the DFA welcomes another hand in this difficult and wide-reaching task. Mr. Chair, the new department will be the first in the world to reflect a country's full commitment to champion the 23 objectives of the Global Compact for Safe, Orderly, and Regular Migration. Moreover, the creation of the new department is a great opportunity to look at the difficulties of coordinating protection and response initiatives for OFWs. For the Philippines, which has more than 10 million Filipinos living and working overseas, the creation of the new department will not come at a better time. Migration is a reality of our time, and it is our state responsibility to make it safe, orderly, and regular. Thank you very much, and good morning. Thank you, uh, Yusek. Uh, I've been getting a lot of text messages from my dear colleagues, so perhaps we could uh, start the ball rolling unless... Uh, some of our colleagues would like to uh, make a quick uh, statement. But anyway, uh, we have with us uh, Senator uh, Win Gachalian, who is physically present. Uh, would you like to start? Yeah, uh, we, we give the floor to uh, Senator Win Gachalian. Thank Sir? you, Chairman. Thank you very much. Um, thank you uh, to the uh, uh, executive departments who presented earlier. I just have some basic questions, no? and this has been... Uh, uh, plaguing uh, this topic when it comes to um, the creation of um, a Department of Over Overseas Filipino Workers. I want to ask uh, Cabset Nograles, um, cre creating a department like this is also signaling. You know, and um, for many, many years, you know, um, the goal is to create domestic jobs. You know, padamihin ang trabaho dito, padamihin ang nagnenegosyo, in fact, uh, all the PCC legislations uh, enacted um, this past few years were all geared towards expanding our local economy and expanding jobs. Pero ngayon, uh, CABSEC, uh, we're now creating a new department geared towards addressing the issues of our OFWs. Um, parang nagsisignal rin ho tayo na gusto ho natin dumami pa yung nagtatrabaho sa abroad. At uh, parang sa mga ordinaryong kababayan ho natin, ang sinasabi natin, eh, okay lang umalis ho kayo sa abroad dahil meron tayong isang departamento na kahawak sa mga ganitong uh, issues at problema ho natin. Uh, ako po, supportive po ako sa mga ginagawa ng pamalaan ho natin para matulungan ang ating mga OFWs. Uh, katulad po ng sinabi ng ating chairman, uh, nung pumunta ho kami sa Hong Kong to talk to our OFWs, uh, makikita ho natin yung iba't ibang kwento ho nila at talagang kailangan ho natin uh, tutukan yung kanilang mga hinaing. Uh, but with this proposal, Capsec uh, Nograles, we're in effect signaling that uh, mag-abroad kayo dahil meron na tayong departamento ng hawak sa mga problema. So isn't this contradictory to our goal of creating more jobs domestically? And uh, now that we're signaling that uh, we have a whole department uh, handling issues to those who want to leave the country. 
Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. May I respond? Thank you for the question, uh, Senator Wynn. Ano? Um, hindi naman po, no? in fact, the bill also provides for a mandatory review after 10 years. At ang magre-review po nito ay ang Senado at ang Kongreso. No? Uh, kung kinakailangan pa ba at kung i-extend pa ba. Then after 10 years, may 5-year mandatory review. No? And the mandatory review really is the signal na alam po natin na in the long term, ang gusto po natin talaga ay uh, makabalik at makapagtrabaho ang ating mga Filipinos overseas, maka-establish ng kanilang, kanilang sariling uh, negosyo at hanap buhay dito po sa Bansang Pilipinas. And hopefully nga po, yung lahat ng mga natutunan nila, technologies, know-how, skills uh, that they acquired abroad, ay magagamit din nila eventually dito sa Bansang Pilipinas for the benefit of Filipinos and the nation as well. But we also cannot turn a blind eye to the reality na not just for work but for other purposes. Uh, migrant, there's, there's really immigration. No? There's, um, there's um, migration, regular migration happening not just um, from Philippines going towards other countries but all over the world. Migration is really a reality on the ground. No? And in fact, uh, kaya nga po meron global compact for safe, orderly and regular migration which we've also already incorporated in this bill, as we can see, um, and that will really make sure na mapapangalagaan po natin ang uh, kapakanang, kapakanan ng ating mga kababayan abroad. But ultimately also, as part of our global compact for safe, orderly, and regular migration, is yung safety nila um, to guard against illegal recruitment but also ultimately no to enable to protect them but also to enable them also to come home to their home country and uh um contribute um uh, domestically naman uh, dito sa country of origin so it's just something that we really need to do in terms of creating this department para lang ma-integrate ang lahat ng approaches uh but yes uh the, the policy of government still maintains to be now while we're protecting our filipinos overseas ultimately what we want them to ultimately do is um be productive domestically no um and that that's the reason why there's a mandatory review um ng uh, ng creation ng uh, department na ito mr chair so kamsek uh, with this ten, after 10 years there's a mandatory review assuming no in in on, uh, assuming uh best case scenario and uh, in a perfect world uh we managed to create 10 million jobs domestically and um, uh, possibly encourage our OFWs to come back pwede rin po bang after 10 years ma-dissolve itong departamento na ito um it will really be up to congress uh mr chair no um uh, sa wisdom ng congress ng ng panahon na yan, um, uh, and that oversight committee at uh, because of the oversight committee naman I would presume na yearly or regularly DOFIL will be reporting to the oversight committee ng kanila mga accomplishment so within 10 years you will already have kubaga a list of accomplishments na ginawa ng department and then upon evaluation of that congress on the 10th year of the existence ng DOFIL uh, we will leave it, leave it up to the wisdom po ng ating legislators if they see fit na hindi na kinakailangan pa itong department na ito. Um, and like, like you said, uh, like uh, the good Senator Win Gatchalian said, Mr. Chair, in a perfect world, kung kunyari ay uh, talaga nakakreate tayo ng ganun karaming trabaho, um, then perhaps the Congress at that time, may see it fit to perhaps abolish or siguro slowly um, slowly uh, uh, put it back or reorganize the department. So, depende po sa Congreso on that, that particular period in time, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Kabsek. Another basic question, Kabsek, uh, and I was talking to our chairman earlier, uh, yung mga pang-aabuso, no? uh, the root causes actually come from domestic, no? Um, a lot of them come from illegal recruiters. A lot of them come from uh, syndicates. Uh, marami ho tayong mga sindikato na nag-ooperate at uh, tinatarget po yung ating mga kababayan sa 
mga kanayunan. How will this bill address illegal recruiters? And uh, for the past uh, probably five years, ilan na po ang napakulong na illegal recruiters? Yung sa arrests of illegal recruiters, I will defer to Secretary Bebot Bello and uh, Dole and other agencies who may wish to respond. No, but don't, Mr. Chair, sa katanungan about how this bill will address um, two ways. Number one, uh, with uh, the establishment ng mga malasakit centers, na may integrate na po one-stop shop na po lahat ng yan. We hope to be able to ramp up yung services. Uh, para hindi na mga nga ilangan ng illegal recruiters kasi ang tingin kasi ng ating mga kababayan eh mas mabilis uh, pag dumaan sa illegal recruiters or mas naloloko sila ng illegal recruiters kasi mas nafa-facilitate ang paperwork. Pero kung mabilis yung pag-aksyon at pagtugon ng ating mga malasakit centers uh, sapagkat meron na pong one-stop shop at nalalaman ng ating mga kababayan na ito yung pinaka in legal way at uh, mas safe na paraan, then uh, hopefully there will not be a need for our kababayans na dumaan ng illegal recruiters. Uh, that is in the carrot uh, approach. no. But sa stick approach naman po, syempre kailangan natin din mag-crackdown uh, doon sa mga illegal recruiters and we will leave that up to the enforcers. With the department of, uh, with DOFIL, with the new department, mas magiging mabilis yung pakikipag-ugnayan ng DOFIL with our enforcers at uh, mas makaka-request po uh, kasi secretary level mas makaka-request din po siya ng tulong mula sa iba't ibang mga secretaries po in the cabinet. So that's really a reality um, on the ground na kailangan po talaga ng um, pagtugon at uh, yung mabilis na action mula sa mga cabinet secretaries who are in charge in enforcing the law. Uh, so mas maging madali yung uh, kumbaga yung communication side pagkuha ng information mula sa DOFIL, uh, papunta dun sa mga enforcement side naman. Uh, kasama yung mga secretaries ng cabinet na in charge po dyan, Mr. Chair. Thank, thank you. Before we hear uh, from POEA, perhaps with the uh, questions raised by uh, Senator uh, Getchelian, just like to uh, show you something, uh, Secretary Bellio, uh, Admin Olalia. No? If you look at the data right now as... Uh, pointed out by uh, Senator Gatchelian. It's very, it's, it's very uh, important that we look into this, no? Uh, can you uh, make it bigger, please? Just that particular... Uh... Ayan ho, pag tinignan nyo po yung uh, endorsed uh, for preliminary investigation, number of cases handled, etc. Pag tinignan nyo po, last 2019 and 2020, dadalawa po yung convictions nito. And so we'd like to find out, and uh, I joined the, the, the gentleman from uh, Valenzuela, what would happen if we create DOFIL, uh, will we be able to address this? And uh, yung hundreds na mga cases po na ito, dalawa yung convictions, eh tataas po ba ito? Uh, may we hear from uh, POEA or Secretary Bello? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh... First, let me inform the Honorable Committee that there is an interagency to go against illegal recruiters, Mr. Chair. And second, we have to admit that uh, we have very few convictions, Your Honor. Now, let me, find, let me explain why. First, Your Honor, many of the illegal recruiters are now foreign-based, unlike before your honors, that most of our illegal recruiters are locally based. Now, we have more illegal recruiters based abroad, your honors. Second, and this is very uh, sad to say, your honors, that many of our victims of illegal recruitment are willing victims, your honors. Alam na nila na Mali yung pinapasukan nila, and yet they uh, they ano they gamble with the offers of these illegal recruiters. So much to your honors that when the case is pending, that's why I don't blame the Department of Justice why mababa ang conviction because many of these cases, your honors, result in dismissal 
Why, Your Honors, nag-execute ng affidavit of the assistance yung mga complainants. So, when the complainants execute that affidavit of the assistance, mawawala talaga yung kaso. And Secretary, this is I'm sorry, Secretary, just to uh, cut you out, uh, we were talking yes. about it ni Senator Win. Kung alam na po nila na ganun pala yung sitwasyon, at alam nyo din po, uh, what what is the department doing or what what is uh, what what POEA is doing? Kinancel ho ba kagad nila? Kung alam na ho nilang ganun, cancel yung order, cancel yung uh, kung ano man yung representation noong uh, illegal recruitment na yun? Tama po, Your Honor. Tama po. Na kinakancel lang POA yung mga lisensya niyan. Pero even without the license, Your Honors, they operate. Even without license, because these are illegal recruiters, Your Honor. At pag nasa abroad sila, wala talaga tayong magagawa, Your Honors. Canceling more franchise nila, eh, it does not really affect their, their business, their illegal business, Your Honors. Kaya talagang mahirap abulin mga yan, Your Honors, dahil ito na modernize na yung kanilang approach. Yung alam nyo naman po na yung Mga nire-recruit nila, kung misang galing sa Mindanao, they fly to Palawan, from Palawan, they go to Malaysia, and then from Malaysia, they go to Hong Kong, and from Hong Kong, they go to the Eastern countries. Ganito yung ano, napakalakaran na yun sa illegal recruitment. Nakaitek na po sila, Your Honors. Kaya medyo may kahirapan, in fairness, Your Honors, kaya may kahirapan sa conviction. Yung arrest, marami naman na arrest. Pero eventually, nawawala nga po yan dahil because of the difficulty of prosecuting them because most of the complainants, yung mga victims, ay nag, nag-withdraw. Hindi nila pinapursue yung kanilang complaints. Thank you, Your Honors. Mr. Chair, um, marami ho dito sa presentation and sa bill, no? it's about assistance. Tulungan ho natin yung ating mga OFWs. But uh, damage have been done already, Mr. Chair. And uh, without uh, going after these illegal recruiters, whether domestic or abroad, and uh, coming up with uh, preventive measures from this happening, uh, yung assistance ho natin at one point, uh, mauubos rin. Pero hindi ho natin, uh, we're not addressing the root cause of the issue, which is illegal recruiters, syndicates, uh, operating uh, and preying on our OFWs. So, in discussing this bill, Mr. Chair, this is a good opportune time to um, address this issue once and for all. And um, I, I, I am in support of helping our OFWs, but yung mga pictures na kikita natin, recently pinost po ni uh, Secretary uh, Teddy Boy Loxin, talagang dudugo po yung puso ho natin. No, yung mga pictures of abuse, na sabi nga ng ating chair, karumal-dumal at parang uh, wala pong kaluluwa yung gumawa, uh, sana ho, gamitin na natin itong batas na ito na pinag-uusapan natin na mahinto at mapigilan at makulong no? itong mga taong gumagawa ho nito. So, ang, uh, uh, my message to, uh, to Secretary Bellio and to CAMSEC is to use this opportune time to um, go after no, this um, uh, illegal recruiters through this law no? because this law uh, will address the reaction of government but we have to also be proactive in chasing and uh, bringing these uh, legal recruiters to justice uh, more efficiently because nakakagulat ho yung presentation ng ating chair na iilan lang po ang conviction. The chair? Yes, uh, you uh, say yes um mr chair we uh we just like to add to what the honorable secretary bell you said uh we agree that it's really difficult to prosecute because most of the recruiters are either neighbors or relatives but we have some gains your honor like uh, we had a, a conviction that was cited in the u.s state department report when two of our Filipinas who were trafficked from Dubai to Bahrain got a conviction in Bahrain, uh, it had uh, it convicted seven Filipinos who made them sex slaves and one Bahraini police officer. It was done without them going to Bahrain. It was only 
through uh, affidavits with the uh, with the help of of course ayakat and our uh, nbi um we also would like to say that most of them most of the uh, they they do not have normal work permits they use visit visas they enter to through dubai and like our case in syria and from dubai they are trafficked to a country with an alert level 4 where there's war like syria we realize this is because they want to circumvent the process of the PUAA. Um, and uh, this has been difficult. That's why we've been uh, working very closely also with our Bureau of Immigration. And I, I understand yesterday they were able to stop uh, the, um, the travel of four Filipinas who were going to Dubai because it seems that they are trafficking in persons victims. Um, Your Honor, we'd like to assure you that we are doing everything we can to, to, to help our kababayans. But I think there's been more apparent now that, uh, especially during the pandemic, that many of our repatriates are um, holders of visit visa. And we've been working closely with OWA um, through the kindness, of course, of Administrator Kakudak, who has been considering them as OFWs, even if they're holders of visit visas, because they are undocumented workers. Um, also, Your Honor, I think it's something that, uh, that the abuses that were posted by Secretary Loxin, they were not illegally recruited. These are uh, household service workers, but then because of kafala and also because of abusive uh, employers, they were, um, they were subjected to abuse. So there are two things that we are looking at, Your Honor. One is the trafficking in persons, and secondly, is the kafala that is existing in the Middle East. That's why we are closely working with our partners and our and other countries of destination to <clears throat> reforms. Thank you, uh, Your Honor. I think the bottom line here is: Will it be addressed by Dofil? Itong mga uh, issues that we are raising. We have heard about Dole, uh, Secretary Bello. It is very challenging, and we'll give the floor to Senator Bato. Sorry, uh, uh, I don't. Uh, just just one quick uh, uh, intervention, lah. Uh, for example, itong uh, third, uh, ano nga tawag dito, yung third uh, country recruitment. I think it's very challenging. And uh, I, I share the sentiment of Secretary Bello, mahirap. Uh, pero ang hirap din po na isipin na parang helpless na rin po tayo. No? And uh, I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, for example, the, the DOLE and DFA can uh, actually engage in bilateral agreements with countries with large OFW population. You know, so that we can be able to uh, monitor and uh, uh, penalize this uh, foreign recruitment agency. So I hope uh, na intensify po natin yon. And uh, again, the bottom line na tinatanong ni Senator Win and uh, I, I join him is paano ito ma address with the creation of the department. I'll give the floor to Senator Bato. Yes, uh, Senator Bato. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, alam nyo, I, I I agree with the. Uh, the statement of our colleague, uh, Senator Wynne Gachalian. And I, I also sympathize with uh, Secretary Bellio. Dahil nga, sa police, ha, sa police uh, parlance yan, ang, uh, yung sinasabi nga niya, number one, beyond our jurisdiction, yung mga salarin. Number two, ito ang pinakamahirap. Ito ang willing victims. Sa police talaga, kahit na airtight case na yung na-build up mo, Pagdating sa dulo, biglang nag-360 turn around yung, uh, yung uh, victim, wala ang kaso. Talagang uh, hindi mo makumbik yung uh, mga suspects na yan. But uh, ito nga, yung discussion na ito, Mr. President, nakikita natin na the more na suportahan natin itong bill na ito, itong do-fill na ito, dahil with the passage of uh, this bill in Tulo, ay wala na magiging willing victims. Paano pa bang maging willing victims yung FW natin kung alam nila na mayroon ng departamento na nangangalaga sa kanilang welfare, mayroon ng departamento na nag-asikaso sa kanilang employment abroad, bakit pa sila pupunta doon sa mga illegal recruiter na yan kung nakita nila na may do-feel naman na mag-asikaso sa atin? Dito na tayo sa legal. So wala na maging willing victims, Mr. President. So the more na gaganda yung takbo ng ating mga FW na ito. So yun lang, Mr. President. Uh, thank you. Chair. Chair. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. Uh, Chair. Who's, who's talking? Sorry, I can't. I, Senator I can't Hi, Senator, Senator Nancy. Binay. Yes, uh, with the indulgence of Senator Win. Ah, uh, siguro just to add din sa converse, uh, din sa topic, Mr. Chairman. Uh, 
for me kasi hindi na ito usapin lang ng illegal recruit, recruitment eh. Usapin na to ng human trafficking. Uh, uh, in, yung sinasabi nilang willing victim. Siguro yung share ko lang kasi during nung time ng father ko, nung vice president siya, ito yung nag isang trabaho, trabaho niya. And in fact, merong isang instance doon na nagbihis madre pa Kaya lang sila nahuli na talagang magtatrabaho sila sa abroad kasi nga nakabihis madre pero nakapulang sapatos. Kaya nahuli sila na talagang ang intention nila was really to work abroad. So isa tong problema na mas malalim na hindi sa tingin ko kayang sagutin ng DOFIL but uh, uh, kumbaga, this is an interdepartment problem kasi nga human trafficking na to kaya Katulad na nabanggit ni Yusek Ariola, meron tayong iyakat na tinatawag para nga bigyang solusyon itong problema natin sa human trafficking. Yun lang, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chair, just to uh, uh, conclude my uh, my queries um, and give chance to other uh, to our colleagues, uh, gusto ko lang ho ibigyan din no, that the objective is to create more jobs. No, The signal here is to create more jobs domestically, to create more entrepreneurs domestically, at dito ho sila magtrabaho, bumalik ho sila para makasama nila yung kanilang pamilya. And this measure is aimed to efficiently deliver services to our kababayans abroad, especially our OFWs, and to prevent from prevent crimes and syndicates from flourishing and uh, preying on our OFWs. So itong batas na ito ay... Uh, uh, gagawin pong uh, mas episyente po ang gobyerno ho natin sa paglalagay po sa isang departamento, lahat po na may kinalaman po sa pagbibigay serbisyo po sa ating mga kababayan. But the signal should be very clear that the goal is for our kababayan to come back, to be with their families, and to contribute to nation building. So thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Senator Christian. We'll... we'll... <coughs> We'll, we'll uh, proceed with the uh, with the uh, order. Uh, we, we'll, we'll give the floor to Senator uh, Frank Drillon, our minority floor leader. But before that, uh, we'd like to uh, 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 give the opportunity to uh, the author of uh, one of the authors of uh, the bills that we are uh, tackling today, Senator Bongo. Nice. Senator nice. Bongo, you're recognized. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, to my uh, fellow colleagues and our resource uh, persons, uh, good day and thank you for allowing me to make a short uh, manifestation. Today, we heed uh, the call of the President to uh, enact a measure that will uh, create uh, a department solely to focus on uh, the ever-growing uh, ever needs of Filipinos uh, in foreign uh, lands. I thank our good Chair, uh, Senator Villanueva, and all of my uh, colleagues uh, who filed similar bills for leading this uh, first step towards the realization uh, of this goal. The president has been uh, steadfast in his uh, position that, that the country needs a department to properly address the concerns of Filipinos uh, overseas. This is so important to him that he has called uh, for the creation uh, of this department in the last uh, two uh, uh, state of the nation addresses. Simple lang po ang layunin ng batas na ito. Gusto natin na magkaroon ng isang ahensya ng gobyerno na magsisilbing timon para sa lahat ng concerns ng ating mga kababayan sa ibang bansa. Para naman po ito sa ikakabuti po ng mahigit uh, 10 milyong Pilipino na nakipagsapalaran po uh, sa ibang bansa. Tatagal po natin sa public service, hindi naman po lingit sa ating kaalaman na kapag... Uh, Pag ating, ating mga ahensya ay uh, hiwa, hiwalay at may kanya-kanyang mandato, ang nahirapan po ay ang ating mga overseas uh, Filipino. Kadalasan din nila alam kung saan sila pupunta, pinagpapasahan pa sila, hindi po, hindi po dapat yun itong ating gobyerno. So clear po natin sila sa kanilang sakripisyo, ang maayos at uh, maasahang servisyo. E, pinatawag nga po natin silang uh, uh, modern day uh, heroes natin mga bagong uh, bayani. Matagal na po tayong nagtatrabaho para sa kapakanan ng uh, ating mga kababayan sa ibang bansa. Panahon na po na maramdaman naman nila 
uh, ng ating uh, pinagtatrabahuan. Ang executive department po, nagkaroon na sila ng serye ng uh, mga meetings at uh, consultations among the government agencies involved in this measure to coordinate and, and consolidate uh, their concerns about the bill. Nakakaisa po ang ating mga government agencies in support of this uh, proposed law, no? Uh, headed by uh, Tabsec uh, Nograles, uh, Secretary Bellio, uh, Yusek uh, Riola, at iba pang mga sila, Yusek uh, Astra. Uh, salamat po sa inyo. Hindi po ito pang dagdag sa ating uh, bureaucracy. Rather, this is a measure to streamline the bureaucracy. Kaysa naman hiwa-hiwalay ang ating mga ahensya na nagsisilbi sa ating mga overseas Filipinos, hindi po ba mas maganda na nasa isang bubong na lang sila isang uh, team, isang mandato, kailangan po mayroon tayong one country team approach para uh, pero ang pinaka-importante yung boses po na kailangan natin pakinggan ay ang boses po ng ating mga overseas sa uh, Pilipinas. Napakarami po ang nagsasabi na bakit natin uh, may, merong mga nagsasabi na bakit natin kailangan gumawa ng uh, isang departamento may eh, gumagana naman po ang ating seta. With all uh, due respect po, iba naman po ang nangyayari sa ground. Nahirapan po ang ating mga overseas na Pilipino. Paano, natin mas, paano po natin masasabi na gumagana ang ating sistema eh, sa tuwing ako po ay umiikot sa ating mga kababayan. Uh, paulit-ulit po ang kanilang mga pinaing. Sana po ay alalahanin natin na sila po ang nangangailangan dito. Pakinggan po natin sila. Intindihin natin kung saan po sila nanggagaling. At the end of the day, para naman po sa kanila itong isinusulong nating batas. Nandito po tayo, hindi, hindi para maghain lamang ng mga batas na hindi kailangan. Nandito po tayo para magbigay ng solusyon. Nakikiusap po ako sa ating mga kasamahan na sa pagsiservisyo dito sa Senado. Help us uh, craft this law and help us uh, craft this in a way that uh, would uh, truly work and achieve its uh, intended objectives. Uh, uh, Maraming salamat sa mga kasamahan ko rito, sa mga colleagues ko, of course, kay uh, Senator, uh, our Minority Floor Leader, Senator uh, Frank uh, Gilon. Maraming salamat. Uh, napakadami po ng ating mga kababayan sa ibang bansa uh, na naghihintay po ng uh, tulong natin. Uh, maraming salamat po. Thank you, Senator uh, Bongo. At this juncture, we give the floor to... Yes. Uh, Yusek Astra. I'm sorry. Uh, we have we have uh, an order here. We'll, we'll we'll give the floor to our minority floor leaders. Been uh, waiting okay. for quite a long time. Our uh, minority floor leader, Senator Frank Rilon, you're recognized. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I have been listening intently to all the presentations for the past one hour, and I can appreciate the uh, uh, various views. Uh, uh, put forward by our different government agencies, uh, indeed being part of the cabinet, with the president having certified uh, this measure, um, it's incumbent upon them to defend the creation of this department uh, for overseas Filipino workers. That's natural. I don't blame them, although they had different positions in the past on precisely the same issue. Uh, but having said that, Mr. President, <clears throat> I think I can claim a little experience on this point. Uh, I started my government career as Secretary of Labor, and I have had uh, first-hand experience on these problems and uh, uh, was able to address many of these problems as a Secretary of Labor then. Of course, I'm a little bit dated. I was there um, about 30 years ago, but hearing what the proposed, what what the problems are, um, it's not nothing uh, that is uh, new to me uh, in various uh, forms. I have uh, uh, confronted this. Uh, having said that, Mr. President, may I be given time to review carefully the propositions and the position papers of the various cabinet members. Uh, I would like to have a copy of the presentations. Uh, 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 I will review the transcript, um, uh, but particularly the presentation of Secretary Nograles, the presentation of uh, the DFA, the presentation of uh, the 
Department of Labor and Employment. I'll just give you a little time to review all of this uh, before I raise uh, questions so that it can be a substantial discussion on the issue at hand. So with that, Mr. President, may I defer my uh, questions uh, to some future uh, hearing set by this committee. Thank you very much, Mr. President, Mr. Chairman. Thank, thank you very much, uh, distinguished minority floor leader, and we'll put this on record that you are not uh, at all aging. You're always updated, uh, uh, distinguished minority floor leader. Every single uh, measure that is being passed in this August chamber, eh, talagang, uh, uh, fully scrutinized by our minority leader, and uh, he makes sure that uh, every single measure that will be passed will be quality uh, uh, measure, quality uh, laws of this uh, country. So again, thank you, uh, distinguished uh, minority floor leader, and we take note of your uh, 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 request, and uh, we, we uh, direct the secretariat to uh, make sure that uh, not only the minority floor leader, but all the members of the Senate be given a copy of the position uh, uh, positions of the different agencies of the government, including the presentations made by uh, our uh, cabinet secretary and uh, uh, DFA and other uh, agencies. Uh, next in line is uh, our uh, uh, distinguished uh, colleague uh, from Davao, mm -hmm. Senator Bato De La Rosa, if he's... Uh, online parang okay na po yan chairman yung binanggit niya kanina i'm not sure okay yes, senator mig subiri of course our majority leader will will uh will um will uh, give the floor to you if you yeah, if you it's okay mr to... chairman i think some resource persons want to be recognized uh, we have i think yes. the ofw Oh, OPA Secretary, yes. Office of the yes. President, uh, and if also... That's the case, we, um, can, we can recognize uh, our uh, representative from uh, CFO and the uh, Overseas Filipino Workers and the uh, Muslim Concerns. We have Secretary uh, Abdullah Mamao, uh, who is with us. Yes, sir, uh, you're recognized, sir. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Your Honor. Uh, I would like to go back uh, on the issue pointed out by the Honorable Senator Gatchalian. And uh, it is about the effective uh, uh, prosecution of uh, illegal recruiters. The problems that uh, we are facing are not only illegal recruitment, but also tra human trafficking. And I had sent this in my travels to the Middle East, especially in uh, Iraq and in Kuwait and uh, in Saudi Arabia, and for that matter in uh, some parts of uh, the Middle East. Uh, one thing that uh, I would like to point out, uh, Mr. Chairman, is that uh, in the matter of uh, prosecution, as pointed out by Secretary Bilio, there is that problem of uh, lack of interest on the part of uh, the victims. Uh, I would like to say that uh, this is one thing that can be the subject of legislation, where uh, the matter of uh, prosecuting uh, crimes on illegal recruitment and human trafficking can be considered uh, as public crimes. In other words, even if there is withdrawal of the criminal complaints, the prosecution for that matter can uh, proceed with the prosecution of these criminal cases. And uh, from the data that uh, was just presented, it seems that uh, we have uh, sort of uh, a very, very lax uh, prosecution of these criminal cases. So the leadership on this new department will really be a very important component on the creation of this department that will serve as a very effective uh, organization on uh, international labor migration. So I would like to suggest, uh, Mr. Chairman, that the law on the prosecution of uh, illegal recruiters should be considered as public crime. And one thing also, uh, in relevant to the prosecution of drug offenders, maybe one uh, consideration that could be made is to consider uh, the crime of illegal recruitment as uh, non bailable offenses, so that in the event uh, uh, a, a respondent is accused and uh, there is uh, an information filed, that respondent will remain in jail until the case is prosecuted, prosecuted successfully by our prosecution department. Thank you very much. Thank you, Secretary Mamao. Uh, 
from the Commission on Filipinos Overseas, I, 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 I was hearing kanina si uh, Yusek uh, Astravel. Hello, uh, Mr. Yes. Chair. You have the floor. Yes, please. can you hear me? Yes. Um, I would just like to make an intervention regarding the human trafficking and illegal recruitment. It is good to note, uh, maybe the legislators would appreciate it very much also if we report that the Philippine government has been ranked as tier one. Uh, against human trafficking for four consecutive years already. So since the start of the administration of uh, President Duterte, that was in 2016, we have received the tier one ranking. And we are the, the only uh, country in Asia actually who got that ranking. So the, the efforts of this government has been very um, notable to fight against human trafficking and the uh, coordination of the different agencies has been enhanced and in fact uh, the creation of the DOFIL would also address the concern of this because even in the IACAT council meetings one representative from DOLE and another representative from ILAB, another representative from CFO, and so on and so forth. But when the DOFIL is going to be created, there's only just one voice that's going to be uh, consolidated in the IACAT ADVOCOM and the coordination for, for, for these efforts will be done uh, by the one of the different uh, agencies, migra uh, migration agencies, will in fact be consolidated and there will only be one voice and one command that is going to be given by the secretary. So uh, we believe in the CFO that uh, as the IACAT Advocom chair, we believe that with this uh, creation, it will address a lot of the issues. And so we would like to recognize, all of, of course, the um, uh, marching orders of the president to really fight against human trafficking and illegal recruiters. And in fact, there are many cases we could ask the DOJ to um, give also to this committee the report on the convictions, the recent convictions, the recent cases that the uh, IACAT has done for to fight against illegal recruitment and um, human trafficking. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank, thank you, Yusek Astravel. No? And uh, again, uh, we are we are with the uh, the executives when you talk about the importance of having a department that would solely focus, laser focus, and concentrate in the affairs of our uh, overseas uh, Filipinos. But uh, no less than the secretary himself made mention uh, from the Department of Labor and Employment that this is very challenging, no? And uh, uh, Senator Wynn and I are talking about how DOFIL will be able to help address the problem of um, uh, illegal recruitment, the problem of third country uh, uh, recruitment, the increase of third country recruitment, especially uh, after this pandemic, nag-shoot up po ito, no? And uh, as mentioned earlier, I think with the uh, establishment of a department of uh, Filipino overseas, perhaps th th there, there will be uh, uh, a focus on uh, addressing the, the uh, engagement of bilateral agreements with countries with large uh, uh, OFW uh, population. Again, to monitor and uh, penalize yung mga foreign uh, recruitment agencies. We'll give the floor to uh, Senator Amy Marcos. Uh, Senator Amy Marcos, you're recognized. Senator Amy Marcos. Senator Amy, I think, I think she's on the other hearing. <laughs> Mr. Chair? Yeah, I think she's on the other hearing, Mr. Yeah, Chair. Yeah. M Mr. Chair? Yes, uh, Senator Nancy Binay. In the, si Yusek Edelion kasi was raising yes, her hand. Yes, yes, I, I saw her kanina, but 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 she left. Uh, I couldn't see her right now. Yusek Edilon. Uh... Yes, I'm here. <laughs> yes, you're you're there. Okay. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I couldn't see everyone in this uh, small screen. Okay. Uh, Yusek Edilon, you're recognized, please. 
Yes, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and good morning to uh, the honorable members of this committee. Uh, we just would like to weigh, on, weigh in on the uh, issue raised earlier by uh, Senator Wynne, and this is really with respect to, you know, that policy of uh, uh, labor exporting batayo hindi okay so we always maintain that uh it's not a policy to to export labor but uh we see actually this uh department as an opportunity to to bring home that message and uh we think that uh what can be done is to make explicit the mandate of uh, reintegration as part of uh, the mandate of uh, of the department of uh, of this department so in particular um we are actually proposing that in section 4 we include as part of the mandate uh that of uh, formulating um responsible for the formulation planning and coordination of reintegration and social service programs for uh, returning ofs in fact we are even proposing that for the office of the uh, undersecretary for foreign employment that we include there and reintegration so what uh, the, the situation we are hoping to happen is that uh, for every overseas filipino living uh, remember we uh, we actually provide a, a pre departure orientation where we actually include the uh, financial literacy courses as part of that and uh, we should actually include financial planning and uh, uh you know uh, require all these uh, overseas filipinos to come up with a financial plan so how much are they uh, hoping to to raise with this uh, overseas employment and when do they want to come back so that they can they can plan accordingly and we have the department that will also help them uh with respect to uh, uh investment placement we already have an amendment to the uh, corporation code which uh, actually will allow them to uh, to uh, invest in corporations here in the Philippines will even allow them to uh, to attend meetings in uh, you know virtually so these are these are things that uh, can be uh, handled also by uh, by the department again so that uh, the, the signal is that uh, while we are while we recognize that this is a reality uh, we still think that uh, you know, uh, we still know and recognize that the uh, long-term plan of uh, Filipinos is still to have to be to be with their family. So that's all, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Yusek. No, just just one question. But before I, I do that, let me uh, reiterate my uh, my uh, uh, my uh, position on this. And uh, we agree that this should not be the case, and this is not a state policy. And we'd like to emphasize the importance, really, the importance of creating jobs here in the philippines that we don't need to see uh, another kababayan of ours imagine yung binanggit natin kanina 6000 plus before the pandemic 6000 plus every single day would leave the country would be separated from their families from their loved ones etc so importante po talaga yung uh, pagcreate ng uh, paglikha ng trabaho dito sa ating bansa at yung binabanggit niyo po yung Edilon, yung reintegration no? i just remember sa china sa china yung uh, yung, yung policy nila uh, they utilize their overseas uh, Chinese professionals mm -hmm. by introducing policies by to provide formal incentives to returning professionals yes. to conduct uh, research and practice their uh, profession through uh, facilitating scholarships, uh, mm -hmm. grants, funding, etc. I think gusto natin mangyari no, once we, we put this uh, 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 new department of uh, Filipinos uh, overseas. But uh, let me ask you one question, Yusek. Uh, when, you, when you talk about uh, right sizing, uh, fiscal space, I, I remember during the budget hearing, Ang Neda had, had, had uh, a strong reservations on uh, establishing a new department. No, uh, when it comes to right sizing principles, chaka itong uh, fiscal space. Uh, does our government have enough fiscal space if we, uh, if the proposed department uh, will be passed uh, uh, this year? Because that's our uh, goal. And uh, number two. Uh, can you give us estimated uh, uh, total uh, budget requirement for the initial implementation, perhaps maintenance of this uh, proposed uh, department? And siguro, how much also will be saved considering that uh, uh, upon the presentation of uh, uh, CABSEC uh, Nograles, yung mga agencies ipagsasama-samahin, so yung mga uh, nag-overlap na, na mga positions, eh, magiging uh, synchronized po yan, makakasave po tayo. Can you give us a, a just a ballpark uh, figure, uh, Yusek Adilon? Thank you. 
Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, actually, it was uh, the Office of, uh, of of CABSEC who consolidated all the inputs with respect to this. Uh, uh, yes, this was actually the, uh, the the issue, the concern raised by the economic managers. But uh, we now recognize that uh, uh, this could actually be the way to really come up with a more efficient delivery of services. So we think that uh, having so many departments uh, in charge uh, is uh, may not be the optimal uh, way of uh, delivering the service. And uh, so we don't have the, the ballpark figure, uh, uh, but uh, we are looking at uh, all those uh, numbers that were uh, mentioned by, uh, by CABSEC that if it's really a matter of um, you know putting together all these uh, previous uh, bureaus or departments in charge and then uh, you know the, uh, the the budget uh, uh, parking it in in the, in the department then um, uh, it could be a way of uh, of rationalizing it but uh, actually uh, I, I would defer to the to the DBM to come up with the, the with the more uh, exact uh, um, uh, numbers with respect to uh, how, how much does it really take to uh, to start an, uh, uh, a, a department. In, in fact, one of our, our comments as well is to provide for a longer transition for this department. I think the bill states uh, that it's just for uh, six months. We are actually proposing uh, two years uh, because we are in a pandemic. There are so many, um, so many uh, problems that could come up that requires very, very uh, immediate uh, response. Uh, and uh, if you have, uh, you know, a, tra a transition uh, uh, being done, which is, you know, massive transition at that, then it could hamper the uh, the response. So, but uh, but we think that uh, if we allow for a longer transition, then that would be that would take care of the of the issue. Thank you, Mr. Chief. Okay, thank you. Uh, si Kabsek Nograles would like to, uh, if you want to, to say something about 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 the uh, questions raised, if you have uh, some figures. I think we also have uh, from DBM, si Director Meng Hamal, who's also with us. I don't know if uh, she could help us out with the questions uh, raised, but unless uh, Kabsek Nograles would like to... Uh, to say something um yes um mr chair thank you uh, actually dun sa slide na present po namin actually what we wanted to show lang is in the first year of its creation hindi naman po tayo magdadagdag ng budget kasi yung budget na nakalodge na sa iba't ibang mga of, of offices mga iba't ibang opisina yun yung gagawin na na. na o ipapasok ipapasok kapag inamalgamate natin so wala nang dagdag na budget ang kinakailangan uh, we will only see what sort of budget implications it will have siguro on the next uh, budget cycle na po. Um, and I think that's the reason why the six months is nandyan. Uh, because wala naman tayong babaguhin sa budget, nandyan na po yung budget. So if, for instance, uh, Congress is able to pass it this month, March, mapirmahan na ni Pangulo, then you just have six months towards the end of 2021 to be able to just subsume what is in the OMWA yung existing ATN units, yung sa legal assistance fund, sa CFO, sa ILAB, sa POLO, sa NCRO, at sa ISSO. Lahat pa naman yan ay gagamitin dun sa panibagong uh, um, department at wala naman tayong i-create na bagong uh, undersecretary siguro. Uh, muna kasi meron ng isang USEC na i-absorb na position. Um, and then um, siguro yung next, next budget cycle ipapasok na lang po natin. And that's the reason why we want it sana passed na, Mr. Chair, para we can already, uh, when Congress begins to deliberate on the 2022 budget, then uh, doon na po natin makikita, na, ninyo, na makikita both the Senate and the House, kung meron pa bang karagdagang budget ang kinakailangan for 2022. But very minimal lang siguro, Mr. Chair. Yes, thank you. Mr. Chair. Perhaps na, next hearing, if we could uh, hear something from uh, DBM, kasi kung is synchronized po yung ilang mga positions definitely we will uh, be able to save some uh, some uh, monetary and you know, funding for, for for the department and another thing that i'd like to raise is that uh, dbm during the uh, budget hearings i remember they were uh, kind of uh, having second thoughts about creating a department last year because of the fact uh, in, in the light of the uh, mandanas decision by uh, fiscal year 2022 that uh, would impact the overall personal services level 
of our uh, public sector. No? So I hope uh, na, na ano po na, I think Senator Amy Marcos, oh, Senator Mig Subiri, our majority leader, yeah. would like to add something. Yes? Yeah. Just just to add, because um, CAPSEC is online, Secretary uh, Bellio is online, my dear colleagues uh, in the executive department are online, and they're listening. What is important is we don't create false hopes for our kababayans, no FWs. We have to create a department that is actually uh, uh, that can actually help them out. Diba? Kasi mahirap naman sabihin natin uh, sa kanila, gagawa tayo ng Department of W's, pero huwag kayong mag-alala, sila na bahala sa lahat ng problema ninyo. So we have to make sure uh, that we're not providing false hopes with them and that there is a clear-cut structure in place on how their grievances can be heard and how their grievances can be uh, uh, solved. Because I'll give you an example. We created recently the Department of Housing. But my question always is, did we increase the number of houses in our country, na locos houses, because of this new department? So, ang ayaw ko mangyari, bilang author nitong Department of uh, Filipino Overseas Workers, ay meron tayong isang departamento na wala namang nagagawa. Bumabalik pa rin sila sa dole, bumabalik pa rin sila sa ambassadors para sa kanilang mga uh, tulong at pangangailangan. So, I need the support of the, 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 we need the support of the executive. How to really make this work? Kasi kayo ang implementors eh. Kami, we can write the best law. But if it is not implemented properly, naka-ere, no? Na, they're still hanging. All our OFWs will still be hanging. And then eventually, sasabihin nila, oh, walang hiya itong department. Wala namang ginagawa para sa amin ito. Ayaw natin yan. We have a, a chance now from the very beginning to make a good law to make sure that it is responsive of the needs of the OFWs bilang isang author. And that is the input that we need from the executive department on how we can make it work. We see already the bottlenecks. We see the problems of financing. We see the problems of uh, personnel, even in the emb embassies abroad. So, wag po natin tong gawing shell cabinet uh, portfolio. It has to be a working cabinet portfolio. So yung po ang kailangan namin because I'm listening I'm listening intently to the discussions with all due respect to our different government agencies but we need specifics on how it will make it better not a mere absorption of the departments that are now existing is not enough to create a a a powerful efficient effective department as we had seen in the creation of the Department of Housing I do not see a tremendous amount of new houses in the countryside so, sana, eh, yung Marawing eh, kami ni Aimee, di ba, at ni Sen Bato, hirap na hirap kami sa Marawi at uh, yung mga bahay nun kulang pa. So, uh, let's work together on how you can give inputs that can actually directly improve uh, the versions that we have already filed. Para, para to sa ating mga kababayan ng OFWs, let's not give them a white elephant, let's give them a very efficient and effective department. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I will continue listening intently for better, uh, for you. other uh, uh, increased uh, additions to our bill to make it work. Thank you very I, much, our distinguished you, majority floor leader who worked so hard for this uh, committee hearing to uh, continue and uh, being very supportive of the these uh, measures at hand. I am a living testimony. I've seen uh, firsthand how our majority leader uh, takes care of our uh, OFWs, no? And uh, as mentioned earlier, when we went to Hong Kong, uh, he made a lot of our kababayans happy uh, during during that time. And again, thank you, Majority Floor Leader. We give the floor to Senator Amy Marcos. Yes, she's here. Okay. Senator Amy, you sorry. have the floor. Sorry. Medyo nag-jogging kami between DA and uh, Senator Dick. So um, I uh, logged in earlier and, and then went on to other places. So I'm back. As uh, Arma just said, let's be careful that we don't unduly raise expectations. It's important that uh, we home in, in into the uh, actual target. Uh, as we know, there are three categories of Filipinos abroad. There are those who are permanent, there are those who are temporary, and the irregular migrants. In temporary, ang commonly na tinatawag nating uh, OFW. Uh, talaga bang um, i uh, ta target natin lahat yan or uh, liliwanagan natin? Kasi it's very, very important that uh, we're very clear so that. Um,
hindi natin siya kupin lahat. And as uh, Majo said, uh, masamang experience natin pag hindi rin naman napopondohan at na hindi rin nabibigyan ng maayos na direksyon yung uh, department, sayang lang, title lang yung department at saka sahod lang ng limang USEC ang binabayaran. Wala lang. Um, the other thing that I really needed to know was, uh, is there a real resumption of placement abroad? Full blown na ba yan? Na-discuss ba kanina? Kasi litong-lito po yung uh, mga dito sa Norte, yung mga na-repatriate, kung makakabalik ba yung mga NARS, hindi ba pwede yan? Ano na ba talaga yung sitwasyon? Kasi ang pagkaalam nila, hindi pa sila pwedeng i-repatriate. So medyo nagkakagulo lang. I just uh, needed an update. Uh, you don't need to answer right now, but it's important given the discussion about Bayanihan 1 and 2. The... Uh, um, disbursements for the uh, OFW uh, items in both those laws need to be um, explained and finalized. Yes, do we have I see the end. May taga DBM, Chairman, who's raising her hand. Yes, uh, can, we, can we hear from you? Yes, um, good morning, everyone. Uh, Mr. Chair, I would just like to add about uh, what uh, Kamsik Nograles mentioned about the budget. We actually have this um, cost of uh, estimated cost for 2021 level, the amount of 1 billion 109 million 357 and 40, 485, uh, which refers to the estimated minimum funding requirements for the newly created department level for a newly created department level entity. So this would cover the cost for the basic operationalization of a department. But this excludes those for the implementation of, of the specific programs, activities, or projects of a department to deliver its organizational outcomes and outputs consistent with its mandate. We have the, uh, uh, some assumptions that could be considered in coming up with this estimated cost. Uh, should Chair? I give the breakdown? Yes. I'm sorry. Uh, Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. Chair, with all due respect, yung tinatanong ko, yung status sana ng B1, B2, at kung talaga nag-resume na yung uh, placement abroad, yung deployment, 100% na ba siya? Yes, I think si Senator Aim is asking Dole or DFA. Uh, Mr. Chair? Yes, uh, Secretary uh, Bello, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. would like to address the concern of my kababayan, Senator Aim uh, for the information of the Committee of Honors, I would like to inform you that uh, the repatriation of our overseas continues every day. In, in fact, Your Honors, the repatriation, uh, well, it was re substantially reduced, but it's still talking of about 1,000 to 2,000 repatriates every day, Your Honor. Now, as to the deployment, Your Honors, uh, we have no deployment suspension right now, but we have a deployment cap with respect to our nurses and other healthcare workers. The cap, Your Honor, is 5,000 per year, but this cap, Your Honors, does not cover the Balik Mangagawa, Your Honors. I see, I see. And for, yes, and for the information of the Honorable Committee, we are now uh, negotiating with the United Kingdom because the United Kingdom government has requested that they be exempted from the deployment cap of 5,000 a year. And it is under negotiation, Your Honor. And another country, which is Germany, is also requesting for a deployment of 50,000 medical workers, Your Honor. And these are all subject to discussions, Your Honor. So that's the present situation of our, our deployment, Your Honors. Thank you so much. The reason I ask, Mr. Chair, is precisely as Secretary Bellew said, despite the urgent pleas of the European Union, as well as California and other states in the United States, um, the uh, 
the nurses and other health workers uh, who wish to go overseas have not been allowed overseas. Pero yung pala, may kap pala tayo and under negotiation. Thank you for that information and uh, if we can be updated as soon as possible. And then yun nga, yung B1 at B2, kumusta na, na tanggap na ba ng uh, ating uh, dole at iba't iba pang lugar? Uh, iba't iba pang ahensya yung naibigay sa bayanihan 1 and 2 mula sa DBM Your Honor, may I request our uh, POA administrator to address that concern Your Honor Yes, Admiral Alia, you're recognized yeah. Good morning, Mr. Chair Good morning, Honorable Members uh, Senator Marcos, yun pong H2A at H2B po, ito po yung ating uh, seasonal workers and non-seasonal skilled workers po natin. Aling, aling item yan sa Bayanihan 1 or 2? Bayanihan 1. Oo, to clarify lang, kasi yung naintindihan lang po namin yung Bayanihan 1 and 2 eh, baka, baka yung uh, detailed project listing na yan. Uh, these are the seasonal workers, uh, ma'am. And uh, according to the U.S. Uh, government, uh, tinanggal na po nila yung, uh, yung uh, restrictions sa atin. No? So yung H2B, I think, uh, they are allowing now. The are you U.S. referring to an American visa? Is that correct? Yes, yes, yeah. yes, ma'am. De, ang tinatanong ko, natanggap na ba ninyo ang, ng kabuuhan yung perang galing sa DBM, sa Bayanihan 1, at saka sa Bayanihan 2? Uh, Your Honor, we already received all the budgetary allocation under Bayanihan 1 and Bayanihan 2, Your Honor. And thank you very much for that, Your Honor. Yes, naniniguro lang. So, um, have you been able to disburse the uh, entire amount? Kasi na tuklasan namin sa ibang department, uh, nasa 25% or even less yung nagastos despite the fact that it's supposed to be an emergency fund. Your Honor, yung Bayanian 1 fully paid out na your honors. Oo, so, na-report na ninyo yung Bayanian 1. At saka nagdagdag pa nga kayo, ewan ko pa paano ninyo nagawa eh. Yung Bayanian 2... Yung Bayanihan 2, Your Honor, sa uh, malapit ng maubos na rin, eh, <laughs> yun na lang pong appropriation for our OFWs under the ACA program. Eh, meron na lang po siguro na iwan na mga almost 400 million pa, Your Honor, to cover about 40,000 OFWs. Eh, siguro na doon naman kulang yung ACA. <laughs> <laughs> yung abot kamay sa pagtulong, Your Honor, that is our program for our OFWs, we are giving them a cost assistance of $200 on-site and it's a peso equivalent of 10000 if they be repatriated, Your Honors. Yes, that's right, Secretary. Kaya sigurado ako madali lang gasto sa inyan, kulang pa. So if you could just submit the breakdown for Bayanian 2 so that uh, we have uh, it on record. And then lastly, Mr. Chair, I'm just being difficult, but out of sheer desperation um, over the repatriated OFWs, Kabsek uh, Nograles is here. Uh, there is uh, the possibility, of course, of simply expanding the PEO in the meantime, uh, with an executive order, pupwede ba yun na i-expand yung authority, uh, bigyan na muna ng budget kung hindi pa natin kaya. Alam niyo ako yung dakilang Ilocana dito, kasama ni Secretary Bello, and if you will see, 2019 pa, wala pang uh, COVID, ang sinasuggest ko, wag muna ng department, kundi authority lang. Kasi alam ko nga kung gano'ng kalaki yung gastos, tulad ng sinabi ni DBM uh, Meng Menghamal, eh napakamahal talaga. I was actually thinking, worst case na lang, hindi ba pwedeng i-executive order na muna yung POEA at talagang hirap na hirap na talaga ang ating mga OFW, expand authority perhaps, and uh, integrate DFA and DSWD uh, functions that are relevant. Wala lang, devil's advocate lang para mapabilis lang ang uh, ating problema. Yes, I think it's an important uh, issue raised by Senator Aimee and I'd like to join her in... Uh, 
ensuring that we'll get an answer, no? Bakit importante na department instead of a, for example, a bureau or a authority focusing on OFWs? Can, can, can we have an answer on that? Uh, Siguro kay Kabsek o kung kanino man po, uh, uh, bakit kailangan ang uh, department, not an authority. Uh, and another thing that I'd like to raise, as uh, mentioned by Senator Aimee, in Sri Lanka, ganun po yung ginawa nila sa Sri Lanka, yung kanilang Ministry of Foreign Employment uh, acts as a policy-making body on all matters relating to foreign employment. So ang ginawa nila, parang yung POEA natin, yun ang ginawa nilang another... Uh, unit, no? parang department, yung POEA natin, yun ang ginawa nila. So, uh, I hope na meron tayong mga pag-aaral nito and uh, we know for a fact that this is the best way to go to uh, to create a department of overseas Filipinos. Can we hear from uh, Kabsek? Um, yes, Mr. Chair. Um, thank you for the question, Senator Aini. No? Um, I guess uh, the answer would be um, structurally, um, it is something that we hope to accomplish in terms of right sizing and concentrating all efforts. No, so structurally, um, kung lahat under one umbrella, um, um, instead of it being some sort of interagency, magkaroon na rin ng permanence. Um, yung structure na yan, na everything's under one umbrella at isa lang po yung timon, gaya ng sinabi ng author si Senator Bongo. Um, and then by rank. I guess uh, mas mas ano I mean di hamak naman po let's be realistic mas uh, nakikerry po ng powers ang iniimpose ng isang uh, cabinet secretary so with a cabinet secretary um, and a secretary rank a uh, member of the cabinet a full-fledged member of the cabinet na makaka-report uh, kay pangulo makakakuha agad ng presidential directives from the president at makaka-impose din po agad no because uh, remember, pag cabinet secretary po uh, ang level, uh, syempre pagdating sa international, sa other countries, cabinet secretary ang nagsasalita. No? So in terms of um, prosecuting, uh, going against traffickers, uh, being a member of the interagency council against trafficking, uh, illegal recruitment and everything, pakikipag-usap sa mga counterparts natin uh, sa ibang bansa, uh, person na cabinet rank, holds much sway um, in discussions like that kasi alter ego na nga ng uh, Pangulo. So maraming advantages po. And then thirdly, um, um, of course, uh, we want to do it very, very fast uh, as said by Senator Aimee. But um, if I guess kung the choice is between an authority and a department, uh, mas pipiliin po ng uh, executive branch at ni Pangulo nang narin mismo. Uh, kaya nga po nag-issue na siya ng uh, certification of urgency uh, so that uh, the Senate uh, would uh, take uh, into recognition that si Pangulo na rin ang nakikiusap na department na. Kasi same effort na lang din po kung we uh, do an authority or a department the, prefer the preference, with all due respect, um, Senator Aimee, uh, Mr. Chair, is uh, department level. Well, uh, first, thank, thank you, uh, Senator Aimee, just, just one, just one yeah, minute. Yeah, no problem. Uh, if you may, thank you. Uh, Sec Secretary Negrales, please don't get us wrong. We are with you. A lot of senators are supporting this measure. I, for once, very passionate about this. In fact, we believe that there's really a need for a, 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 a one agency government, whether it's an authority or department, that would really focus on the uh, affairs of uh, uh, our uh, beloved Filipinos overseas, especially our Filipino, uh, our OFWs, no? And, uh, syempre, pagdating, you know very well, more than any member of the cabinet, how it is in the Senate, how it how it works in the, in the Congress. Uh, after the committee hearings, we will be on the floor, we will be debating on it, we'll be scrutinizing the measure, etc. I'll be the one uh, uh, defending the, the, the measure. And, and it's important that we talk about this, no? As I mentioned earlier, yung uh, Sri Lankan model, yung, yung parang POEA nila, yun yung ginawa nilang uh, Ministry of Foreign uh, Employment. Now, when you talk about, uh, as I was listening attentively to your uh, uh, statement, yung, yung importance of mainstreaming our OFW services. Yung pong ginawa ng India in 2004, uh, they established a separate ministry for overseas uh, 
employment. No? Ang ginawa nila, yung Ministry of External Affairs, which is similar to our Department of Foreign Affairs, yun po, doon nila nilagay yun. No? So DFA, their, their DFA in India handles this uh, OFW uh, services. So again, uh, ang point lang natin is we, 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 we look into all these models and we say this is really uh, what is best for our uh, situation, for, for you, you set up the present setup natin uh, with, with a lot, with millions and millions of our overseas Filipinos abroad. Uh, yes, Here, just, Senator Aimee, Mr. Chair, yes, Mr. Just Chair with, with the permission of Sen Aimee, related. Yes, uh, Senator Binay, uh, with the indulgence of Senator Aimee. Senator Binay, you're recognized. Okay lang, Sen Aimee. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. Hey, yun lang, um, Mr. Chairman, kasi di ba parang nasabi ni Cabsec Carlo, with the creation of DOFIL, parang may secretary na nakatutok. But we, we do have a secretary. I mean, Secretary Delio is there, who also has the ear of the president. So, ano yung magiging diprensya with the creation of DOFIL? Mr. Chair, may I respond? Yes, please, 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 Kabsek, thank you. Magad, maganda yung tanong ni uh, Senator Nancy, no? So basically, parang um, if you look at DOLE and the, per, the portfolio of the Department of Labor and Employment, napakalawak. So siguro ang ma-imagine or ma-envision po natin, pagdating sa OFWs or even overseas Filipinos, not just OFWs, but for the Department of Overseas Filipinos ang mag-handle ng overseas Filipinos concerns. No? Whereas si Secretary Bello at the Department of Labor and Employment will, we can really now focus on job, job generation, employment domestically. So parang uh, that way, we, especially with this COVID-19 pandemic na maraming nawala ng trabaho, uh, if we have the two departments really working on employment, no? um, protecting our Filipinos overseas, um, how to get them uh, back uh, working there and even reintegrating them back domestically. And then si Sadole naman, protecting our domestic um, uh, Filipino workers naman domestically. No? Uh, ang lahat ng mga kababayan natin, mga Pilipino na nagtatrabaho dito. So parang ganun, it's magkaroon ng, um, we hope to be able to accomplish even more protection for our uh, workers, either overseas or domestically. Um, and then, uh, of, of course, generate more jobs. At the end of the day, ito na yung next laban natin after COVID. Eh. Uh, job generation, employment, and all of these things na kailangan natin to get people back uh, sa kanilang pagtatrabaho. Yeah, pero, Kapse Carlo, pero technically, pag sinabi mo overseas, yan naman ang trabaho ng Secretary of Foreign Affairs, di ba? Uh, in fact, um, mas siya yung may pers personality abroad. And so, ang ibig sabihin ba na ito, yung magiging secretary ng DOFIL will already do some jobs of the Secretary of Foreign Affairs? Uh, actually, um, Mr. Chair, kaya nga nakalagay dun sa ating uh, bill, uh, sa bill na sinusuportahan ng executive, um, na nandiyan yung one country approach pa rin. No? So basically, what we really want to accomplish, Mr. Chair, is meron talagang mga nakatutok dito uh, sa ating OFWs at uh, overseas Filipinos. Uh, but because again, no, the DFA, malawak din yung hinahawakan ng DFA. And now we have the support of DFA. No? Lahat ng nandito ngayon ng mga departments natin are well aware of how the assignments would look like. The, na parang uh, while we're working together as one country, um, at least may mga nakatutok na mga cabinet secretaries according to the mandate that will be provided by Congress ultimately. So yun po yung gusto natin ma-accomplish, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Senator Aimee, you may uh, continue. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Cabsec Nograles has uh, given us three compelling reasons that a department is required. To my mind, um, these are not that compelling after all unang una yung structurally right sizing surely the opposite would occur given that as majority leader uh, subiria said sabang sawa na tayo sa ating mga shell uh, departments na wala naman nangyayari kasi wala naman budget wala naman liderato ay para kay pa 
Ako yung Ilocano, ha? We don't have 1 billion pesos in the time of COVID burning a hole in our pockets. It's simply not the case. I filed the authority long before because the expertise, in fact, lies with POEA. You cannot, even if you endow uh, this new department with all kinds of money, you cannot overnight generate the kind of skill sets required for the psychosocial repatriation of our OFW. You cannot uh, mandate all these labor relations and other uh, requisites that we would need in order that our migrant labor populations would be ready for the new normal and be ready for the new regional adjustments. Secondly, yung isang timon, uh, hindi naman natutulog sa pansitan si Secretary Bello at ganun din ang tapang-tapang ni Secretary Loxin. Sa palagay ko, maliban pa dyan, si Presidente na kailang beses na rin na ginagawang cabinet rank yung hindi naman cabinet, katulad ng NEDA, ang tagal na ng NEDA na authority lamang Pero secretary po, ang tawag natin, higit sa lahat ng kausap niyan, World Bank, IMF, FATAF, ang tataray at nang bobongga ng mga kausap. Eh hindi naman totoo ang secretary kung tutuusin, wala naman department yan. Ikatlo, ang sabi po ninyo, quickly. Ang nangyayari, hindi po quickly. I'm fully aware that this was part of the uh, platform and the promises of President Duterte when he ran in 2016. But 2016 to 2021 has been a very, very long time. So uh, I am uh, really very uh, um, keen that uh, we carry on already. Kung i-o lang yan, sige na lang. Pero importante talaga na magkaroon tayo ng isang uh, uh, namamahala sa ating mga repatriated of OFWs. You made the distinction between uh, local and international labor. There is no such distinction. Thousands, hundreds of thousands have been repatriated and have now been forced to look for jobs in the local workplace. Thank you, Paul. Thank you very much, uh, Senator Aimee, and uh, we hope to, to get a uh, clearer uh, picture in the coming uh, hearings. Uh, why is it really important? No? Uh, we cannot uh, uh, take this path of uh, just putting or creating an authority instead of a department. But also, we'd like to uh, place on record, uh, um, uh, as I mentioned earlier, yung Sri Lankan model, tsaka yung Indian model, Yung sa Nepal naman ho, sa Nepal, yung uh, Nepal's Ministry of Labor, Employment, and Social Security, or MOLES, this is similar to our uh, Department of Labor and Employment, sila naman po yung nag-handle ng, uh, ng uh, overseas, uh, fil uh, overseas uh, workers po nila. So uh, perhaps in the next uh, hearings, we'll talk about more of these uh, different models where we can uh, uh, perhaps uh, learn uh, from and at the same time ensure that uh, what we are uh, tackling here and yung direction po natin, this is the best way to go in uh, in uh, serving our uh, overseas Filipinos. Next in uh, on the list is Senator uh, Francis Tolentino. Uh, Senator Tolentino, you're recognized. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Good morning to our uh, colleagues. Good morning to our resource persons. Kwento ko lang siguro yung uh, my previous experience during my previous life as MMDA chairman. My first week in office, I visited Taft Avenue. And Taft Avenue was teeming with a lot of uh, enforcers. There was an outpost of uh, the Philippine National Police, Pasay Police. There was, there was a station for the Highway Patrol. There was an outpost for MMDA. And I think I, I, I saw uh, another outpost for... Pasay traffic enforcer. So sabi ko, anong ginagawa nyo rito? We're manning the traffic. So seeing that, I I saw the chaotic uh, situation. Dinimolish ko lahat yung mga outposts. A lot of them performing the same functions. But to set the record straight, I am in favor of this, this measure. I would just like to uh, add more confusion to the chaotic situation. I'd like to ask the representative, the highest ranking representative coming from the DFA, and probably Secretary Nograles can butt in if, if, if he may uh, so desire. Is there a DFA uh, representative here? 
Secretary yes, we have uh, Yusek Ariola and uh, other members of the uh, department. You may proceed, uh, Senator yes. Celentino. Uh, Yusek Ariola, are you there? Yes, sir. Honored. Good morning. Yes, uh, this will this will crisscross previous questions uh, made by Senators Binay and I. I think uh, Senator Marcos or or the previous uh, 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 questions coming from my colleagues. Apparently, and uh, to the credit of Secretary Bello and the draftsman of this bill, I was once a co-author of the previous measure, DOLE gave a lot of its functions to the proposed new department, the DOFIL. Apparently, uh, the downsizing, right-sizing right issue would be resolved by, has been resolved, or, is still to be shown as resolved by uh, in our in our uh, next hearings. But I would I would like to see a a shedding of powers, so to speak, not sharing, not coordination, as my previous uh, Taft Avenue experience would show, but a delegation of power coming from the Department of Foreign Affairs to the newly to this uh, to this. Uh, new department that we are trying to craft. I, I see a probable mess in so far as overseas hosting. And I I would pose again my analog of Taft Avenue Edsa in a in a foreign land. The the DFA is supposed to be in charge of our foreign affairs. Under the constitution and the tradition it's it's the representative of the president exercising full legate, full plenipotentiary powers, and full powers to represent the country. My 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 question here is this, and Secretary uh, Magrales can back in. Under the present bill, it would appear that the role of the DFA is just to coordinate. And that the role of the DOFIL would like would likewise be coordinative. You call it one count, one country approach, which which for me is uh, very esoteric. Uh, what 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 would be nice is to to give this new department a specialized role. Uh, we are creating a department because we would have we would want to have professional management. We would want to have a a hierarchical uh, uh, control, command and control effort. But uh, the way I look at it, as crafted, no offense uh, to the draftsman, Section 5 would mean coordination. Section 17 would mean coordination. Are we not granting the DOFIL enough functions and powers to do its job? Kuparang kulang eh. At uh, last January, the Department of Education entered into an agreement with, with, with its counterpart in China to train Philippine teachers to speak Mandarin. I think even without DFA approval, they can do that. But is the DOFIL allowed to uh, exercise functions either to being done by DFA, entering into a bilateral agreement with its counterpart, perhaps in Kuwait? in Bahrain, parang kulang, is, is DFA willing to shed some of its powers? DFA? Your Honor, uh, good morning. Thank you for that question. Um, Your Honor, at the moment, actually, um, the one country team approach really solves the problem because they are um, all agencies, uh, it will be under and the, the new department, the DOFIL, will have an attache who is under the control and supervision of the ambassador. Um, actually, uh, the the work of the the new department will um, encompass everything, Your Honor, from the pre-departure, um, the the employment, and and even the um, uh, even the PAOS post arrival orientation seminar and their employment itself, and of course the whole country team. Uh, as of now, Your Honor, it involves not only the DOLE and the DFA, it also involves even the SWD. So um, it is very important, Your Honor, that everything is, um, uh, you, ju you just have one policy, um, policy coordination. And 
of course, Your Honor, any agency that negotiates abroad has to uh, um, coordinate with the Department of Foreign Affairs because um, the, the, for the representation abroad. Um, as of now, um, we have four secretaries that that's the, the, who are dealing with overseas Filipinos. Of course, we have Secretary Belly and Secretary Loxin, but we also have Secretary Mamao and Secretary Acosta. So you have four secretaries already, which um, to, to our mind, um, it's um, it, we, when you have many secretaries uh, that have uh, have different policies, and not really different, but um, that will. Uh, that have their own jurisdictions it might be difficult and your honor I, I was following the discussion a while ago as to the other countries of origin that have uh, special specialized agencies we just like to reiterate that the philippines is the champion of the global Com compact for mig migration we are second to none when it comes to migration we are the gold standard for migrant protection when we speak abroad everybody listens because we are cutting edge and we are pioneering. We have made, um, we think outside the box. So um, to, to a certain extent, um, it's like putting together what we already have. And um, even compared to all those countries, even having some uh, department, we already, we went beyond that because we, we already have a regularization of our undocumented workers in compliance with objective five of the global compact so your honor i think this new department will be able to put together the efforts of the different secretaries who are taking care of migration and of course dfa will be there to help i think the challenge now is your honor is there are some posts abroad because we have 94 posts uh, um embassies and uh, uh, consulates general um, some do not have OWA and some do not have POLO. So in the meantime, while we're waiting for all of those posts to be filled with ATN um, attaches, um, the DFA will in the meantime take over those functions, which we've been doing as of now, Your Honor. Um, and at the end of the day, it's still the ambassador who has control and supervision um, but of course for, for the policy of foreign employment and as to the policy of migration itself it will come from a single department and a single secretary which uh, so there won't be any confusion and there will not be any uh um there will uh, there will be more um it's going to be more unified your honor thank you very much so what you're saying under you said is that uh the while there is a a one country uh, approach system to be in place at the end of the day it will be the ambassador uh, pardon my uh, language now who is even not the secretary of the department of foreign affairs who will be the final authority on what to do with situations involving our ofws it is very different from a committee which will have a final definitive authority for, for instance i no offense to my uh, co-lawyers here i call the supreme court as a committee of 15 lawyers but with final definitive authority in this instance you're referring to the four secretaries but the final determination most probably will be greatly influenced by the ambassador i now refer back again to my previous uh, story my previous my my first week in uh visiting at Taft, four traffic enforcers groups pnp highway patrol pasay traffic enforcers and mmd all doing the same uh mandates but making the situation more chaotic but my question really uh Yusek, are you not willing to shed some of your powers i understand that the DFA is the representative of the president in terms of foreign policy. But at this instance, when the president himself certified a measure, giving DOFIL some amount of foreign policy leeway, isn't this a shift in the presidential determination and his wisdom that we cut some, splice some of the functions of the DFA and transfer it to DOFIL when it comes to OFW concerns. Um, Your Honor, actually, uh, the, the DOFIL 
is already uh, uh, tr actually the third pillar of foreign policy is the protection of our nationals abroad. And much of it goes to DOFIL. What's going to be left with DFA is consular. Um, and of course, at the end of the day, Your Honor, uh, the ambassadors or the co uh, and our congens, uh, we have to follow the law. I mean, what is, is placed there. And um, at the end of the day, the, the architect of foreign policy is still the president. And it, we just have to have some form of order in, in the embassies and in the consulates that the, the ambassador, of course, is uh, the, or the congen is the one that's recognized by the foreign government. But technically, the protection of our nationals abroad, much of it also already goes to uh, um, to to the, to don't feel your honor and even when it comes to uh, migration issues it's going to be with the new department it's just that we we need to be able to um, coordinate and the one who has actually it's the highest ranking officer your honor in the post will be the ambassador your honor or in some cases the congens uh, your honor for consulate general for the the consulate general if i so, may uh, senator so valentino if i may yes. just 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 uh, one uh, 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 interjection, uh, Senator Talentino, thank you. Um, uh, for, forgive me for, for, for asking this question, uh, uh, you said, no, but, but, but before I ask this question, let me just show you something, uh, uh, a, a slide of what is happening, for example, in the Middle East, when you talk about uh, caring of our uh, OFWs. Right now, in 2020, if you look at the uh, mistreatment maltreatment 4302 contract violation you look at 2016 to 2019 it averages about uh 7000 no uh yung contract violation right now it's 21127 look at the sexual harassment cases this is just in middle east so just to point out uh uh to everyone here that uh there's so much room for improvement in taking care of our OFWs, just to point that out. And uh, to, to ask my question, uh, Yusek uh, Sara, I'd like to know the difference between attaches and foreign service uh, officers. Kasi uh, gusto lang natin malaman, yung attaches ba natin allowed to exercise consular functions stipulated under the uh, Vienna Convention on Consular uh, relations, particularly on assisting Filipinos abroad. Uh, kami ni Senator Wynn been talking about this for quite some time. Kasi yun yung gusto naming maanig from DFA. Ano yung magiging set up? Hindi ba tayo makakagambala doon? Papaano magiging smooth yung transition? Papaano masisiguro na at the end of the day talaga is maalagaan natin yung ating mga overseas Filipinos? Um, Your Honor, uh, for that question, because it involves uh, the Vienna Convention. Uh, I'd like, because I'm not a career officer of the Department of Foreign Affairs, I'm a political appointee. I'd like to pass it on to Assistant Secretary Rico Foss, who would explain really the structure of the Department of Foreign Affairs. Yes, uh, can we hear from him, uh, sir? Good morning, Senators. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Thank you. Please proceed. Uh, um, the Designation of attache is a diplomatic des designation under the Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations as well as on Diplomatic uh, Consular Relations. The designation or the ranking of Foreign Service Officer is an is a designation under our Foreign Service Act. So, magkaiba po. Uh, the proposal under this law is to have the members of the DOFIL assign abroad to be designated as uh, attaché uh, and not as consul because uh, a consul in the parlance of the diplomatic uh, uh, relations has a specific function uh, an attaché as, as a diplomatic rank in the in the Vienna Convention has its own meaning it has its uh, capacity to do diplomatic representation being recognized diplomat and designated as an attaché. So, ang point, ang point po natin, sir, wala hong magiging problema o may encounter na uh, any recognition problem? Pag, pag ano, sir, uh, Senator, pag uh, ano po sila, pag na-designate na po sila at recognize ng bansa na kung saan sila pinadala as diplomatic agent and 
designated as a attache, which is recognized under the Vienna Conventions, they pwede po na sila makapag-represent po ng ating bansa relative to the expertise na daladala po nila. For example, for example, yung mga designate na, designate natin as attache commercial, attache defense, attache labor, attache attache uh, OFW or overseas Filipino, yun po yung kanilang specific uh, designations and uh, function, pero these are also their specific diplomatic rank po. And they could represent the country in their specific areas. Let's be more specific. For example, itong ATN. Yung ATN uh, office and DFA's consular uh, officers, paano yung magiging delineation of uh, responsibilities nila? So ngayon po yung ginagawa po natin, uh, yung mga talimbawa, kasi papasok po sa ating batas ngayon, yung, uh, for example, yung uh, mga labor attache po natin, yung welfare attaches po natin sa mga, i-designate po silang attache pa rin ho. Katulad po na pag-designate po ng ibang consular officers po natin as attaches also. Okay, thank you. Uh, Senator Tolentino, if you may want to continue, thank you. Senator Tolentino, we can't hear you. You're in mute mode. Yes, uh, to, yes, to abbreviate this, uh, Mr. Chairman, may I ask the DFA representative if she can provide this committee a copy of some proposals that would strengthen the bill, the bill in so far as uh, shedding some of the functions of the DFA is concerned. Uh, that's what's, what, what I have been asking for uh, from the DFA because eventually, as I foresee it, Mr. Chairman, eventually this, will, this bill will not just encompass the rights of our OFWs, but eventually we will be treading into health and well-being concerns, culture and arts, and my favorite voting rights, especially for our overseas uh, uh, seamen uh, seafaring, go, uh, on, on seafaring vessels. So I think it's about time as we, as we are crafting the bill for, for the DFA to be forthright and uh, frank enough, hanggang saan ba kayo po pwede? Hanggang saan ba, ano pa ba yung pwede niyong ibigay? Kasi narinig niyo ngayon, you heard that the highest ranking though feel personal to be posted abroad will just be an attaché. Definitely an ambassador is higher than attaché. So we're, we're not trading into the Vienna Convention uh, grounds, but I, I think to really strengthen the bill as what the Dolid did, uh, gi uh, giving up some of its functions, DFA should likewise do the same. And I'm referring to some uh, bilateral agreements involving localities, and I'm referring to prosecution of cases, uh, the direct involvement of uh, DOFIL with uh, police stations uh, where, where our uh, OFWs are being uh, investigated, uh, and even cultural matters. Uh, malawak po ito. So can we have that? Uh, uh, can we get an assurance from the DFA that you will be providing that? Because we now realize a shift in the in the uh, wisdom of the president to remove, splice some of the powers of the FA and transfer it, allocate it to a newly created department. Can um, we have that? Yes, sir, definitely. But your honor, uh, offhand, uh, my- Be Ma'am, ma yes. ma beyond, beyond coordination and cooperation, because coordination and cooperation, uh, these are just aspirational terms. Uh, after the department is created, we will foresee, we will, we will realize that we have created a battle of uh, different departments, uh, uh, a battle to get some turf, a battle of uh, jurisdiction. Among, we, we don't want that to happen, just like my EDSA days uh, for traffic enforcement groups. So I think at this early stage, we have to have that. Um, yeah, yes, Your Honor, will be submitting, but offhand, Your Honor, my office, the Office of the Undersecretary for Migrant Workers Affairs, will be subsumed. Um, all its functions and even its 1.2 billion fund for assistance to nationals and legal assistance fund will go to the new department, Your Honor. So um, aside from that, Your Honor, if you, the, your other questions will be submitting, but most of it have been already mentioned by Cab Set Nagrales, Your Honor, but we'll submit to your One more. The, the, the G 
gist of my question is this. The representative of DOFIL abroad has to have that authority, has to have that respect coming from our, our executive, coming from Malacanang, that he is, he, she is really the representative of the government there in so far as OFW concerns uh, is on the table. So that's what I'm asking for. Not, 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 not your usual uh, transfer of functions, but the authority uh, given to that. I am in favor of this department, but we have to have that authority and that authority must be respected by, by the foreign uh, host and that foreign host must give uh, the proper uh, respect and coordination uh, required, uh, similar to to uh, to a a uh, an ambassador plenipotentiary tempo, plenipotentiary tempo, power, uh, so to speak. Can we have that? Yes, Your Honor. We will comply, Your Honor. Otherwise, magtuturo anto, Mr. Chairman. I have no further questions. Uh, Thank you. I, I wish to participate in future uh, hearings uh, with the end in view of strengthening uh, this bill. Uh, with the end in view of helping our kababayans abroad. Salamat po, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, uh, Senator Francis Tolentino. I think it's uh, very important, very, very uh, uh, important yung uh, binanggit po niyo, yung authority and respect that the, this uh, new department uh, should have. But uh, let me again call the attention of the FA, DOLE, DSWD, and uh, including uh, CABSEC, no? Kasi... In the certified bill that we, we we got, it's not really clear as to how these three different types of attaches would be put into uh, one office. No, the uh, labor attaché under DOLE, social welfare attaché under the SWD, and the assistance to nationals unit under the DFA. So I think we 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 have to do something about it. I hope you can uh, uh, give us uh, your thoughts about it because I don't think. We are looking at one office that will take over these uh, three attaches uh, at the same time. No? Uh, hopefully, we'll get that uh, uh, next hearing. Uh, we give the floor now to uh, Senator Nancy Binay. Uh, with the indulgence of Senator Nancy, I think she's Sec Secretary Mamao is uh, raising her, his hand. Uh, Secretary Mamao, you have the floor. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Your Honor. Uh, I would like to share my viewpoint as far as the issue on authority is concerned. I think this is one thing that has to be settled in the passage of this uh, in international labor migration governance law. As far as the power of the current officers of the Department of Labor are concerned, they don't have diplomatic, uh, what you call, consular powers. So this is one thing that should be considered by Congress, and that is even to the even in the office of the president, and that is to give um, authority to representatives of this new department, the authority to perform as commission consuls, vice consuls, or consular regions of our government. With this authority, they can now perform the functions and responsibilities assigned to them. As of this time, if that will not be settled, there will be confusion of authority, and there will be no power as far as this department is concerned. Now, as pointed out by Senator Soberi, this department must have a very strong uh, uh, working, uh, must be working, uh, strong working department. Now, with this, uh, information of Assistant Secretary Force and uh, uh, Under Secretary Ariola. I think uh, we are agreed that uh, with the passage of this uh, new department, creation of this department, the responsibilities of the Department of Foreign Affairs should be restricted to passporting, visa issuances, civil registration, authentication of documents, and uh, building up the commercial uh, expansion of our uh, uh, econo economy in uh, foreign countries. We have commercial attaches over there who are under the supervision of the ambassador of our uh, embassies in the different countries. So as far as the joint responsibilities of this department are concerned, 
that is assistance to nationals, diplomacy and international labor and employment matters, management, this will be carved out definitely from the Department of Foreign Affairs. Because this is the only way for this department to be effective. You cannot work there at the current situation by representing our government as labor attaching or representative of our government as far as those uh, assistance of uh, the labor attaches in the different uh, foreign assignments, because if they go to the police, if they go to the court, if they go to the Ministry of Justice, Ministry of Interior, and Ministry of Labor, of these host countries, they will not be respected by these different offices. So they have to be clothed, and we will never, never send any of these representatives unless and until their commissions are approved by the host countries. That will be a conditional modality as far as the assignment of our representatives in the different foreign countries. They have to be commissioned as consuls, vice consuls, and uh, uh, consular regions for that matter, so that they can effectively perform the functions and responsibilities given to them under this new department that is going to be created in the future by Congress and then by the approval of the president. Thank you very much. Thank you, Secretary. Uh, we give the floor to uh, Senator Nancy Binay. Senator Nancy. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chair? Uh, please, please proceed. Since we're, proceed. Since we're ano, on the topic of attaches, um, key ASIC force, um, di ba yung pagtanggap ng attaches is still dependent on the host country? Yes po, ma uh, yes po, Senator. And in fact, for example, sa Saudi Arabia, kahit gusto natin magdagdag ng labor attache, kung hindi, papayagan, hindi tayo pinapayagan ng host country, hindi tayo pwedeng magdagdag. Tama po. Uh, function po ng reciprocity din minsan eh. Tapos papa, dapat pumayag po yung host government. Halimbawa, so tama, which means... sabi niyo po, yung sa Eastern Province, for example, we wanted to establish our presence, a permanent presence. Uh, hindi po tayo pinapayagan na magtayo po doon. So which means we go back to the problem na kahit gusto nating tulungan by um, providing them services through an attache, hindi natin pwedeng gawin kahit mag-create tayo ng DOFIL kasi nga we are dependent on the host country. Uh, in, in a sense, a li limiting, limiting factor po kung ano po yung pinapayagan po ng host government kasi as diplomats as we are, no, uh, even if you are from other agency or not, you're from BFA, you're bound to respect the local laws, the domestic laws of that country in the conduct of your uh, work in that country. So that's a limitation. But uh, as we know and as practiced by our diplomats and our uh, colleagues abroad, talagang tinutulak po natin to na para umapaglimpuran po natin yung ating mga kababayan po na nangangailangan. So, and and second and as a force, parang yung yung trabaho na yun still lies with um DFA convincing the host country to allow us to whether it's a labor attaché or commercial attaché. Yes po, sa ngayon, sa ngayon po no. Ang ang iyan po ay lahat ay nakalatag po sa trabaho po ng Department of Foreign Affairs. And as a Foss, um, yun na nga, babalik tayo dun sa creating false hope na hindi porket nagkaroon ng DOFIL, pwedeng magkaroon na ng labor attaché dun sa mga lugar na wala tayong labor attaché. For example nga, dun sa kaso ng Saudi Arabia. Tama po po kayo. Uh, hindi po sa lahat ng pagkakataon na gusto natin maglagay po ng ating mga representatives, whether it's a labor attaché, whether it's a commercial attaché or a defense attaché ay hindi po lahat ng pagkakataon na gusto natin ay pwede pong gagawin. At ay, yun po ay depende sa pakipag-usap po natin doon po sa host government. Okay. And um, di ba ho kadalasan, um, ano, kung if Secretary Bello or si Undersecretary Arolla can, Ar Ar <laughs> can answer, sorry. Uh, um, kasi di ba kadalasan na nagiging problema talaga natin sa mga OFWs, itong mga domestic workers. Tama po ba? In fact, I think doon sa pinakitang slide ni Chair Joel kanina, 
Uh, yung mga welfare cases na yan involving domestic helpers, tama po ba? I think Secretary yes, Bello. Yes, it's true, it's true. Tama, tama. Yes, uh, can I address your honor the concern of the Honorable Nancy Binay? Uh, your honor, maybe just for the record, the uh, demarcation line between the Department of Foreign Affairs and the Department of Labor when it comes to overseas Filipino workers, we have jurisdiction, your honors. DOLE has jurisdiction over documented OFWs. If the OFW is undocumented, Your Honor, then she is under the jurisdiction of the Department of Foreign Affairs. When it comes to cases, Your Honor, DOLE has jurisdiction over cases involving employment issues. But when it comes to cases like criminal cases and other cases, Your Honor, it is under the jurisdiction of the Department of Foreign Affairs. Yun po ang demarcation line between the Department of Foreign Affairs and the Department of Labor. And so far, Your Honor, we have not found any difficulty in our coordination as far as performing our functions in relation to the welfare and interest of our OFWs. Thank you, so, Lord. Secretary, so, Secretary, Debo, uh, pagdating ho with the creation of DOFIL, ano mangyayari dito sa demarcation? Tama na sila. Uh, dapat, Your Honor, may bigay na yung sole responsibility and authority dolphin if we want dolphin to succeed in protecting the interests and welfare of our OFWs. Thank you. So parang, para ho sa inyo, ilipat na yung both functions ng DOLE at saka ng DFA to DOFIL yes, for, for games abroad. Undocumented and undocumented. Undocumented. But, Basta it, in, it involves the interest and the problem of the OFW dapat jurisdiction and authority of Dolphin, Your Honor. If we are going to expect Dolphin to do what is intended and that is to protect the interest of our OFWs. Otherwise, magkakaroon ng sinasabi kanina ni Honorable Senator Francis Tolentino na magkakaroon ng problema kung sino maghahawak sa problema ng OFW. Mabuti once and for all, Dolphin should be clearly in charge of all problems involving our OFWs, Your Honor. So not just, not just OFWs, but overseas yes. Filipinos, Your Honor. Overseas Filipinos. Yes, okay, Your Honor. Um, I think that there is Mr. Chair, si ASEC Foss and Yusek Sara. Yes, ASEC uh, Foss, please. Uh, Senator, Ata, uh, we, we support that idea, no? in fact, it's in the bill now, that the functions both of the APN unit now under the DFA and the functions of POLO under DOLE or ILAG are merged. mag lang po. So there's no distinction in terms of policy operational response to a distressed call from a Filipino. And it is regardless now whether a, that Filipino is an OFW or an overseas Filipino. So, wala po ng distinction. So, ma, as the term used by our cabinet secretary, it's really an amalgamation of not only of the budgets and the structure, but also of the, of the functions and mandates of different agencies. In this particular case, in responding to welfare needs, and distress call of our people abroad, regardless whether it is an OFW, an OF, a tourist, and a student, etc., would be one unit. That is the unit created under the department, uh, under the department of Filipinos or department of OFW, whatever this department will be called later on. So it's really, it's really now institutionalizing what has been agreed upon in the joint manual of operations between the several agencies addressing the distress call of Filipinos abroad. So, yun po yun ang gusto ko namin sabihin at sa dito sa batas na ho na ito. Yeah, yes, ASEC, and idadagdag ko po doon, hindi lang yung ATN officers and the uh, POLOS uh, labor attaches, pati yung uh, welfare attaches ng uh, DSWD, DSWD na yung binanggit po natin kanina na kailangan nating uh, 
pagtuunan ng pansin because in the certified measure, parang isa lang po yun, no So we wanted the, your views on it para masiguro natin that this will work. Sige po, please proceed, Senator Nancy. Okay. Um, sige, siguro may nagre-raisahan si Yusek um, Ariola. Mr. Chair. I, I don't see anyone raising hands here, but yeah, yeah. Uh, Yusek, Yusek Zara, you're recognized. Mr. Chair, uh, um, Senator Binay, um, we just like to reiterate also that the migration policy will be re uh, will be determined also by the new department of uh, the Department of Overseas Filipinos. Um, it was DFA's position time and again because of the many abuses of our household service workers for us to review our migration policy, especially on the cases of upscaling, and for us to decide whether we still want to um, deploy overseas uh, household service workers in certain parts of the world. Um, I think uh, the COVID-19 pandemic already gave us this reset because a lot of our um, um, OFWs are returning. So at the end of the day, um, it will be uh, a department who will really determine where we're going. Um, since it's very difficult and we know very well when, when, when things uh, go back to normal, um, there will be an influx of migration and we cannot really stop our, our OFWs from doing that. But it's also incumbent upon the new department to be able to determine how we could help them because it's sometimes very difficult to go against culture or some very well entrenched uh, practices of some countries but it's also the time also that we have to have a very clear and single migration policy that will be followed by um, the new department. Thank you, Your Honor. Pero di ba, Yusek, Sarah, di ba dapat ngayon pa lang pinag-uusapan na natin kung ano yung magiging policy natin towards, lalo-lalo na sa domestic helpers. Kasi alam naman natin, lahat ng mga uh, centers natin abroad, la lahat, halos lahat na nakaka-problema ay yung mga domestic helpers. Um, yung polisiya na baka it's high time that we um, stop yung pag-allow uh, ng mga domestic helpers natin magtrabaho abroad. In fact, Indonesia has done it. Um... Ano ba yan? Uh, napag, natat, natatalakay na ba yan? Kasi sa akin, I think, kaya nagkaroon ng um, panawagan to create another department is to address basically yung problema ng mga domestic helpers natin. Eh. Dahil sila talaga yung prone to, to abuse, prone to human trafficking. So at this point, napag-uusapan na ba yung uh, polisiya to finally end itong migration for the domestic helpers. I don't know kung sila Kapse Carlo or si Secretary Bello, kung napag-usapan na to um, as a policy even before we pass the bill. Yeah, thank, thank you, Senator Nancy. No? And uh, just to follow up uh, on that particular issue na nire-raise niya Senator Nancy as we uh, uh, flash on screen, uh, for example, itong OFWs working in uh, the Middle East, particularly domestic workers and low-skilled workers, uh, they face the highest uh, risk of exploitation, abuse, harassment, and labor-related issues. So, ang tanong talaga natin is, ayan, uh, napag-uusapan po ba yan? Ano yung uh, response natin? Yan? Paano natin ito ma-i-improve? Uh, has there been a, a ban imposed? o uh, limit man lang by the POEA uh, governing board on the deployment of uh, vulnerable OFW occupational groups from entering uh, these countries. So, siguro ito yung ano namin ni Senator Nancy, papaan natin ito ma-strengthen yung pag-address dito sa issue na ito with the uh, establishment of a overseas Filipinos. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Mr. Chairman? Yes. Siguro, yes, yes, just, just, just to add, um, kasi sa tingin ko din, uh, Mr. Chairman, kahit magkaroon pa tayo ng dofil, itong problema na to, ano lang eh, magiging paulit-ulit lang. Uh, um, ano na, diba, katulad na nga na nasabi, nasabi ni Yusek Sara, um, cultural din to, yung kafala system, kahit naman mag-create tayo ng dofil, hindi mahihinto ng uh, departamento yung, yung kafala system. So, um, yun na nga, as a policy, moving forward, tsaka total naman, di ba, ang, ang policy is not 
to send our kababayans abroad, but as much as possible, eh dito sila magtrabaho. Siguro, um, to take that the first step, eh baka dapat umpisahan pagdating dito sa mga domestic helpers natin. Yes, uh, thank you, Senator Nancy. No? But uh, just to point out kasi dun sa migrants uh, law natin, Section 4 of RA 8042, yung POEA Governing Board, uh, inauthorized po siya to allow the deployment of OFWs only in countries where the rights of Filipino migrant workers are protected. So by now, alam na natin yung kafala system. Alam na natin kung ano yung mga nangyayari. Itong data na ito is uh, uh, happening in the Middle East. And then in Section 4 of RA 8042, it also provides that DFA, through its uh, foreign post, should issue a certification to the POEA specifying if the host or receiving country possesses the following guarantees provided uh, ito nga, itong mga binanggit po natin. No? So, ang, ang ano natin is, na-implement ba ito? Ma-improve ba ito? Uh, what do we expect if we uh, establish a, a new department uh, with regard to this particular issue? Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair. Yes, Secretary yeah. Bello, you're recognized. Thank you, Your Honor. And in response to the concern of uh, Her Honor, Senator Nancy, uh, we would like to inform the committee, Your Honors, the honorable members of the committee, that right now there is no deployment in Middle East where you just saw a high incident of violation of our overseas workers. We have suspended deployment in Kuwait. We have suspended deployment in uh, in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and also in the United Arab Emirates, Your Honor, for the reason that our OFW's rights and, and welfare are not recognized and well protected. In fact, in UAE, Your Honors, there is no valid deployment there because we have no existing bilateral agreement with the United Arab Emirates. In the case of the OF of uh, Kuwait, your honors, we have deployed, so suspended deployment there because of the high incident of maltreatment and abuses of our OFWs. So that's the reason, your honor, that, that there is no deployment now in the Middle East, your honor. Thank you, Secretary Bello. Thank you. Pero Secretary Bello, walang official deployment, pero alam naman natin, I'm sure, uh, Mr. Chairman, tumaas naman yung incidents ng human trafficking. Ayun po, Tama hindi, po, ba? po hindi namin po kuhan yun, yung uh, responsibility, Your Honor. May mga other agencies of government who are in charge with that uh, uh, case of uh, uh, tao, illegal recruitment. and uh, Human trafficking. Oh, po, human trafficking, Your Honor. So, dapat iniiwasan yan. And yung pag-create ba ng DOFIL will stop this practice? Well, if we have a DOLPIL, a specific government agency that will address the problem of all OFWs, this way, this may discourage people from abusing our OFWs because from henceforth, Your Honor, with DOLPIL, they can see to it that there will be no deployment in all countries where there is no bilateral agreement because it is the bilateral agreement, Your Honor, that provides sufficient protection for OFWs. Kailangan meron sila talaga yung standard employment contract. If you remember, Your Honor, when this case of the Mapeles happened, oh, nag, nag declare agad ng ating Pangulo ng total deployment ban. And she, he lifted the, the deployment ban only after they signed a bilateral agreement where all the rights of our OFWs are well protected, Your Honor. Pero, Secretary, pero nag, nagawa... Nag Pwede rin nyo rin namang gawin yun, di ba? Ngayon, kahit walang um, do-feel? Uh, uh, pwede naman po, pero mas maganda kung mayroong focus agency or honor. Hindi, yeah, pero yung pag-ban ng deployment kasi walang bilateral agreement, pag-ban kasi may kafala system pa sila, hindi ho bang kayang gawin na yun ngayon ng dole at kailangan pa ho bang mag-create ng another department just to uh, implement na uh, kailangan may bilateral agreements? 
Kaya naman po, Your Honors, but uh, if you are talking of a focus agency, Your Honor, I think Dolphin will serve as that focus agency na walang ibang ginawa kundi tutukan ang kalagayan ng ating mga OFWs and even our OFs. Malaking problema po yan, Your Honor. Malaking malaking problema na yan. Even in the States, hindi natin nalalaman yung pupunta doon na isigyante. Mag-aaral, kunyari, exchange, exchange, gano'n tawag doon, exchange program. Pagdating doon, nag, ano, nagbebenta ng hotdog. O, malak, malawak, malawak itong problema ng mga OF sa OFW natin. Kaya kailangan talaga, Your Honor, ang isang departamento na walang ginawa kundi tutukan yung problema ng ating mga kababayan. Uh, uh, siguro kay, kay ASEC Force, yung katulad doon ng bagget ni Chairman Joel kanina, na di ba dapat nagre-recommend kayo, ginagawa na ba ngayon yun? Yes, ma'am. Uh, we regularly send uh, certification because it's required under 8042 as amended by RA 100.2 that we send certification whether or not first uh, the country of destination has bilateral relations with us or they are, they are signatory to multilateral or regional uh, agreement uh, protective of migrant workers of, or if they are there are domestic laws protected by migrant workers or there are efforts on their part to do that no i think this is the basis for the uh, for for the pua governing board to decide as part of their decision making process to decide whether or not to continue allowing deployment of migrant workers filipino migrant workers to that destination country so we and, and mer meron na bang na suspend kasi hindi niya nabigyan ng certification at the moment uh, I'm not familiar with the data from PUA, but uh, I think I would suspect that there would be some suspension or some adjustment in the deployment of uh, OFWs in certain destination countries. Mr. Uh, Chairman, maybe uh, the si PUA can answer that. Yes, uh, we want to hear from uh, Admin Olalia, sir, please. Good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, the PUA Governing Board, headed by our Labor Secretary, meets regularly and decides on the policies that we will have to adopt on destination countries that do not meet the labor compliance of a destination country. Halimbawa po nito yung UAE. Tama po yung sabi ni Secretary Bello po kanina, na hindi po inaalaw ngayon ang deployment ng HSW sa UAE dahil ayaw po nila ng ating standard employment contract. Another destination country, for example, is Lebanon. Hindi po tayo nagpapadala ng HSW sa Lebanon dahil po doon sa mga welfare cases at wala pa po tayong accepted and harmonized employment contract. For all the Middle East countries na meron po tayong bilateral labor agreements and who have domestic laws that protects our HSW, doon lang po tayo nagpapa-deploy ng ating HS na value. Okay. Um, siguro, Mr. Chairman, alam ko may mag marami pang magtatanong. Um, last question na lang. Um, kasi yung sec, Sarah, you mentioned na ano yun yung gold standard? Ano yung award na yan? Um, Or recognition? Your Honor, Mr. Chair, uh, actually the Philippines is known to have the highest level of protection for our OFWs because as even in our repatriation, uh, we uh, our COVID response is um, characterized by response, repatriation, recovery, return, and reintegration, all paid for by the government. Or in cases of um, sea-based workers, their um, their um, their um, the um, the recruiters, actually, the local manning agencies. But to a certain extent, when it comes to migration, Your Honor, the Philippines is really known as an authority because we really protect, we, in fact, um, countries of destination are saying that the Philippines have a reputation for being very hardline negotiators. Because if you're good enough for the Philippines, you're going to be good enough for, every, for any country of origin. Um, that's how um, strict we are when it comes to the protection of our migrant workers. 
Um, that's why we are also a global compact for migration champion. Um, it just so happens, of course, we're doing well, but we can do better. And we're looking at this uh, new department, the DOFIL, to be able to uh, put everything together and so that we can do better. Because um, when we have cases of abuse, we know very well that one abuse is one too many. And um, especially for household service workers. but. Even, it, that's why we're also very supportive or of the countries of destination who are having uh, um, reforms already because they're also asking for support from, from countries of origin like the Philippines because there's the, the governments are willing to change but the resistance is coming from their populations and their business sector because kafala also means that they will uh, incur more uh, expenses. So, and I think your honor, um, one of the things that we should also focus on, the new department should focus on, is upskilling. Um, because if our if our overseas workers or they still plan to return, um, if they have other skills other than uh, being household service workers, then there will they will be prone to less abuse. Because most of our service uh, our abuse cases are done in the homes of. Uh, the employers that we cannot enter by the time we intervene there's already abuse that has been done which the, is very rare that happens if the employee is living outside the home of the employer thank you your honor mr chairman la, la, last na lang, last question um in that you implementation eto, for example ofw yung, yung proceso how will it be different for example ofw ako na mag -a apply abroad with the creation of dofil what will what will be the difference in my application? Uh, Senator, if I may, please, please uh, proceed. Uh, imagine mo, parang sa isang bahay na lang po sila pupunta, hindi na pupunta sila po doon. Ibawa, pag nag-apply po ako, ang pre-departure pre -departure or pre-employment seminar is being done by POEA. Diba? Ang pre-departure orientation seminars being done by OWA and it's yeah. Yeah, as it was, uh, um, and then, because it's POEA. Eh. In and fact, it will be an it will be an attached agency. So, kung sinasabi mo na pre departure, hindi na magiging trabaho ng POEA. Ano matitirang trabaho ng POEA? Uh, Senator, ang laki pa rin po ng trabaho ng PUA with the regulations of overseas employment would still be the core mandate of the PUA and the technical expertise of the people at the PUA would still be there. Ang um, siguro lang doon lang sa pag-streamline ng proseso dahil sa isang departamento na ng lahat, no? lahat yan, uh, sa isang kahit attached sa agency po at saka doon sa organic, doon sa department, eh, isang bahay lang uti na. Hindi, pero as it was, physically ha, mas malaki magiging building ng POEA kaysa doon sa Dofil. Tama po ba? <laughs> diba? Physically, mas malaki building ng POEA kaysa sa Dofil. So I don't know kung may facility yung Dofil uh, to conduct uh, ito mga pre-departure seminar. Tama po ba? So at the end of the day, gagawin pa rin ito sa POEA. Ay, yung ating, ang, ma'am, sa ano naman po eh, yung as far as I know, and I could, if we could ask the POA for this, but uh, I think the, the the way they conduct their pre-employment seminars, they do it within coordination with the local governments at the provinces, at the local at the local government. Hindi naman po doon sa building mismo ng POA. So, in terms of physical structure, you're right. Uh, the, uh, the POA is a bigger building for the non-existing building yet of the of the dog field but uh, as we go along siguro naman po and then we consider the importance of the work and the mandate of the dog field if this is passed as a law um ako ay nananalig na magkakaroon po po ng tamang bahay po yung dog field and then yung fees kanina na ibabayad may babayaran pa ba sila o wala nang babayaran mga fees ngayon yung OFW kasi di ba at the moment May binabayaran, may binabayaran sila sa POEA. Ngayon ba, Mr. Chairman, with the creation of the department, mawawala na ho ba ito? At it, will it be absorbed by the national government? I think it's still the same. Uh, may we hear from um, Admin Olalia? 
Yes, you're correct, uh, Your Honor. It will always uh, be the same. The uh, fees that uh, POA collects from our departing OFWs will be the same fees that the DOFIL will collect from uh, the OFWs, Your Honor. So, well, technically, parang wala pa rin tayong ginagastos for our OFWs kasi maniningil pa rin tayo sa kanila. Tama ba, Mr. Chairman? T tama po, Your Honor. Tama po. Oh, kasi baka magkaroon din ng misconception yung mga OFWs natin na with the creation of, of the, de de the department, eh, yung mga gastos na sinasagot nila ngayon will be absorbed by the de by DOFIL. May I address the question of, of the Honorable? <laughs> oh, kasi Secretary, di ba? Parang the, the, the passionate Secretary the of the Department of Labor and Employment is recognized. Thank you, Your Honor. Actually, Your Honor, yung charging of peace from the OFWs is a matter of policy. Ngayon, kung under the proposed DOPIL bill, eh, yung Secretary of DOPIL is also concurrently the chairman of the board of the POA, which is the present situation, Your Honor, they can come up with new policies na to make it easier for our OFWs to go abroad na i-waive yung fees from our OFWs, OFWs, especially sa mga household service workers, Your Honor. It's a matter of policy, Your Honor. You know, Mr. Chairman, eh, kasi based on sa presentation ni Cabse Carlo kanina, hindi naman nabuwag yung OWA at saka POEA. So, paano ngayon niya? Pag kunyari, mag, di ba, at the moment kasi yung mga OFWs natin na membro, di ba, may nakukuha silang uh, beneficyo sa POEA at saka sa OWA. So, with the creation of DOFIL, hindi na po sila pupunta sa POEA and OWA to claim their benefits at DOFIL na yung magpa-process. Magiging ganun ho ba yung proseso? Kasi nga hindi naman mo nabuwag yung yung dalawang ahensya. It it will be uh, Senator Nancy, it will be an attached agency of the new department, uh, uh, both OWA and the uh, POEA. So it will just be uh, the same, yes. Wala so ano yung lang. Wala Kasi baka na makukuha from POEA. It is only from OWA where they OWA. get it is especially if you are an active OWA member. Meron kang ano, mga benefits under their reintegration program, Your Honor, which, which involves uh, livelihood assistance, uh, scholarship assistance, at pwede pa nga mga utang doon pa ng up to 1 million, Your Honor, if you can show to the OWA na kaya mong pumasok sa ganong negosyo. Marami, maraming, problem, maraming programa ang OWA para sa mga OFWs. Sa POA po, wala po kasi it's a regulatory body, Your Honor. Yeah. Uh, pero kasi Mr. Chairman, doon tayo babalik ulit, di ba? Isa doon sa reklamo ng mga OFWs natin na parang ang dami nilang pinupuntahan. So dito parang ganun pa rin. Kailangan pa rin nila muntang sa OWA, kailangan din nila mag-claim sa DOFIL. Magiging ganun ho ba yung sistema? That, um, in fact, di ba yung, for example, yung 4 billion na pondo ng NCRO, mapupunta doon sa DOFIL eh. Tapos yung OWA, meron ding reintegration program. So, how will it work? Yung OWA, Your Honor, parang yan ang welfare agency ng OF, ng DOLFIL. Parang ganun din yan. At right now, DOLE ang parang mother ng OWA. And OWA holds the funds for our OFWs, especially our returning OFWs. Kaya no, saan ho mag-a-apply yung OFW? Kasi isa nga ho doon yun sa reklama, di ba, na parang iba-ibang ahensya ang pinupuntahan nila. But with this one, um, since mother, magiging parang mother office na yung DOFIL, hmm. si OFW ba sa DOFIL na lang mag-a-apply to claim for their OWA benefits? Pwede Or separate po. din? Pwede, Your, Your Honor, pwede directly sa DOLPIL, pwede rin sa OWA. And in fact, Your Honor, if you are an OWA member, 
You do not even have to apply. OWA will immediately deliver the assistance or the program for your benefit. Um, but pero siguro Mr. Chairman, yun na lang baka kailangan um ayusin yung de yung detalye na para technically dalo dalawa pa rin yung may dalawang ahensya pa rin nakakausapin yung OFWs natin. Siguro maybe in another hearing baka or in the TWG for the bill baka ma mas maaayos itong mga ganitong issue. And siguro uh, just to add kay you sex Sarah, di ba? The mere fact that you were able to attain your gold standard without um, creating another department um, it means you're do, you're, you're, the job is already being done yun lang uh, mr chairman thank you thank mr. you chair, mr chair yes uh, uh, senator migs please yeah just exactly my point nung pinoint out ni senator nancy uh, Baka ganun pa rin ang serbisyo, medyo mahina, bago lang ang pangalan. Meron lang tayong departamento. Kaya nga, yan ang kailangan natin i-avoid, uh, mga secretaries and undersecretaries. We have to make, uh, when in the creation of this department, we have to make sure we streamline the service. Or else, ganun pa rin ang mangyayari. Tama-tama tam, po talaga yung pinoint out ni Senator Nancy Jan. So I'm with her on that. And now we can streamline the service. And... One question lang, uh, Chairman, before I move on. Uh, I don't know who can answer this, the POEA or the OWA. That large building there in EDSA, this is very important because naghanap po tayo ng bahay para dito sa DOFIL na ito. The large building there in EDSA that says OWA under, is that uh, uh, for OWA alone? Is it utilized all floors? May I find out how many, how many stories is that... Uh, uh, Your Honors, sino po makasagot sa akin dyan on the building of OWA in EDSA Corner, Ortigas? Sino po may ari ng building na po yan? Can anybody answer me, sir? Mr. Chair, can I? Please, please proceed. Administrator po. Your Honor, uh, you're talking about the POEA building located at uh, Ortigas Corner, EDSA. It's yes, a, that's correct. Uh, it's a seven-floor building. Uh, more than 1,000 square meter po yung area, and it is a property owned by POEA. And apart from yes. this uh, property owned by the POEA, sir, meron pong uh, real estate property ang uh, POEA dito po sa may wash. Kung alam po ninyo yung along North Avenue, po, corner uh, Agham Road, that's a, uh, if I'm not mistaken, that's a two-hectare lot. Pag-aari din po ng POEA. Okay, uh, doon lang, uh, are you the head of the OA or POEA? Can you identify yourself, sir? Kasi nakalabas doon, Secretary Bello pa rin sa, sa iyong uh, TV screen. You are USEC or? Yes, sir. I am POEA Administrator Bernard Olalia po. Okay, thank you, Administrator. Doon sa building na, so dyan po kayo nag-office Administrator sa building in EDSA Corner, Ortigas. Yes, Your Honor. It's a Blas Ople building po. Yes, we see it all the time. It's a, it's actually a monument whenever you I mean it's a it's a uh, landmark whenever you see it on EDSA. Uh that building is totally occupied by OWA personnel and POEA personnel from the top floor to the bottom. Only POEA personnel, your honor. So Only completo your... ginagamit po ninyo 100% yung building. Opo, we are, we house there around 300 personnel. Don't put 300 personnel. Yes po. So puno po yan. Hindi po yan pinapalis out sa ibang kompanya, pinapalis out sa private sector. Puno po ginagamit niyo yung seven stories na yan. That's correct, Your Honor. Tama po. Yeah. Thank you. I was just asking, Chairman, because we're, if you're looking for an immediate uh, area for the Department of uh, Filipino Overseas Workers, that could be one possible site. no? If But then I, I believe it's being utilized fully by OWA and POE personnel. But maybe you can retrofit for the meantime. Uh, chairman, habang wala pa tayong uh, bahay para sa Department of uh, Filipino Overseas Workers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, our majority uh, floor leader. And uh, I would also join him and Senator Nancy as uh, earlier stated in our opening statement in the uh, deliberation of this uh, uh, Department of Overseas Filipinos 
uh, let us reiterate and emphasize once again for the end time na hindi po ito simpleng reorganization o parang lipat bahay lang ng mga ahensya sa isang bagong bubong, hindi rin po ito labeling exercise na mistulang pagpapalit lamang ng uh, karatula ng pangalan. No? We expect more, we wanted to guarantee that we will be better. Um, I think uh, at, at, at least at this time, I'll be given a chance to, to ask questions. And in this uh, series of hearings that we are going to do, we wanted to, to somehow uh, 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 frame it uh, in, in three different uh, uh, parts. One is the pre-deployment, and then second would be uh, the deployment process, and then uh, the post-deployment. No? So kanina, ang daming natanong about uh, pre-deployment, and I thank my uh, colleagues for raising uh, those issues. But let me uh, ask uh, our friends from uh, Dole family, and uh, I, I admire, I texted Secretary Bellio for, and, and congratulate him for uh, being passionate about this uh, particular measure that we are uh, discussing today. And he made mention a while ago about the, the challenges no, of the uh, third country recruitment, illegal recruitment. And uh, now we, we're looking at uh, a spike in the undocumented uh, workers. Let me just show you this uh, slide that was uh, reported to this office. Pag tinignan po natin yung 2019 and 2020, ng mga undocumented uh, uh, Filipinos, no? uh, Asia Pacific, Middle East, Europe, and the uh, Americas. Uh, pag tinignan po natin, uh, tumaas pa po itong uh, pandemya, itong uh, uh, 2020, no? from January to July, uh, from 1,553,373 in uh, 2019, uh, itong 2020, 1.5 uh, 80,684. Uh, umangat pa ho ng 20, 27,311. And please bear in mind, please bear in mind that this, this data that we are talking about is not the true state of undocumented uh, Filipinos that uh, we, 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 we have right now. No? Because this particular number pertains only to those Filipinos who actually ask for help, forced to report, uh, because they are probably in trouble or they were arrested. So, pag tinignan po natin ito, no, uh, malaki pa rin. No? Uh, ang tanong natin na, Secretary, um, itong uh, increase of undocumented workers, uh, na pinpoint po ba natin ano yung uh, mga factors uh, behind the increase? And uh, perhaps uh, we'd like to pose this question, what measures have uh, the DOLE and POEA taken to uh, register the uh, and, and document these uh, undocumented uh, workers abroad. Dahil it looks like uh, with this pandemic, uh, parang uh, ang inexpect natin ay tataas pa po ito. Uh, Your Honor, uh, as far as the undocumented OFWs are concerned, Your Honor, we expect a rise, an increase in the undocumented workers uh, trying to uh, no, to register now because you know your honor because of the pandemic they would like to take advantage of our repatriation program kaya marami po sa kanila na dati nagtatago undocumented bigla na lang sila nagre-register dahil gusto po nila mapasama doon sa ating repatriation program and other benefits your honor kasi alam niyo po your honor under yung ACA program namin for the OFWs, ito yung apot, apot kamay sa pagtulong, ACA for short, we gave this one-time cost assistance to all OFWs who were displaced because of COVID-19. Ngayon, originally, your honors, we gave it only to documented OFWs. But when we found out na meron pa rin tayo mga kababayan na undocumented, we also included them in the benefits. That is why marami pong nag-register bigla. Ayun po ang dahilan bakit tumaas ang number of undocumented workers, Your Honor. At kaya sinasabi rin po kulang, kulang po yung, yung pondo ng ACAP. <laughs> Hindi po, Your Honor. Meron pa kaming 
mga 400 million na nandiyan po and we are still trying to pay out yung mga OFWs natin. Meron lang tayong difficulties doon sa mga repatriation owner kasi nasa kanilang probinsya na and mahirap makontak sila. Yung mga iba hindi po marunong mag-online application, hindi marunong magkuha ng mga itong mga remittance center kaya nahihirapan tayo but still Administrator Kadak and Director Bisperas of our ILAB are busy looking for them and giving them what is due them under the program, Your Honor. Well, thank you, Secretary. No, let me take this opportunity to commend the entire uh, uh, department headed by Secretary Bellio. Of course, uh, Admin Hans, uh, buhay na patotoo po ako doon sa uh, pagtatrabaho nila at uh, talagang yung walang sawang uh, pag-walk uh, ng extra mile just to uh, take care of our uh, OFWs. But Secretary, I, I remember you saying the importance of having yung mga uh, binabanggit natin kanina, yung bilateral uh, uh, labor agreements, no? especially doon sa mga maraming Filipinos abroad. Uh, and, and to talk about this particular measure that we are deliberating uh, upon, Can you give us uh, your views kung papaano ito ipagpapatuloy? At I'm sure you would say dapat ipagpatuloy ito and more focus at uh, perhaps become more aggressive in uh, in um, uh, having this uh, bilateral uh, agreements. Uh, can you give us uh, your views? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, because probably because our steadfastness in not allowing the deployment of our OFWs to countries where we have no bilateral agreement. We are pleased to, and, uh, to mention now, Your Honor, na marami ng countries na makikipag-enter sa atin ng bilateral agreement. In fact, uh, early this month, March, March 1 and 2, the high-level delegation from the United Arab Emirates are coming for the purpose of finalizing the bilateral agreement with them. We also received communication from Russia, Your Honor, to negotiate with us uh, also a bilateral agreement. So with uh, Canada, Your Honor, and mentioning three other countries in Eastern Europe, we have uh, Romania, Poland, and UK also, Your Honor, because they are very much interested in getting their exemption from our deployment cap of 5,000 uh, a year, Your Honor. So, marami po, marami po na, na realize nila that the President is uh, serious in not deploying our OFWs in countries where we have no bilateral agreement because it is in conditions like this that our OFWs are, are sometimes subjected to non-payment of salaries, non-observance of the uh, usual benefits of our workers, and so on and so on, Your Honor. Thank you, Secretary uh, Bellio. Baka pag napasahaw itong batas na to, maraming uh, mag-suggest na kayo ang mag-head ng uh, uh, departamentong ito. But uh, uh, kidding aside, uh, Secretary, uh, let, let me point this out, no? Uh, from Dol to DOLE, to DFA, OWA, and... Uh, Uh, POEA, the following year, the following data gaps and uh, challenges were identified in, uh, if you would recall, the 2017 presentation by the Philippine Statistics Authority. Uh, may we know, has there been any progress in addressing the said data sharing gaps? Uh, kung meron po, uh, what are these? Kasi ho, natandaan niyo po, nung mga nakaraang taon, uh, nagkaroon tayo ng pagdinig at uh, uh, doon ho sa ating uh, pagdinig, uh, naging napaka-disappointing po na yung status of the uh, shared uh, government information system for migration under or mandated by the uh, Migrant Workers Act ay hindi po uh, nangyayari. So perhaps if we could... Uh, Uh, get an answer, a status report probably from uh, DOLE or DFA with regard to this uh, data sharing among uh, agencies uh, regarding our uh, OFW-related data. 
Say, hey, thank you, Your Honor, uh, for that matter, Your Honor, may I request our uh, Director of the International Labor Affairs Bureau to give you a short, uh, quick briefing on it, Your Honor. Sige po. Uh, from our I love, ma'am, please, you're recognized, please proceed. Thank you po, Mr. Chair. At present po, yes, meron pong uh, mga systems na ginagamit po ang OWA ang POEA at ang DOLE po para po po monitor ang kondisyon ng ating mga OFWs. But since po doon sa instruction po ng ating Mr. Chair na magkaroon po na tayo ng common data sharing hub for our systems po sa tatlong ahensya na ito, nagsabit na po kami ng project proposal for a common uh, system po na magugovern po sa mga data po ng POEA, ng DOLE at ng OWA. So sa ngayon po ay we are in the process of finalizing the uh, terms of reference of the system that will unify yung mga data po ng tatlong ahensya, sir. That's all po. Thank you so, po, Mr. So, ma'am, you're still finalizing, meaning hindi pa po tapos? Opo. So, you're still finalizing. What about DFA and the other agencies? Uh, Your Honor, can Administrator uh, cut that of OWA add something to that, Your Honor? Yes, please. Uh, Admin Hans, you're recognized. Thank you, Paul, Mr. Chair, and, and Secretary, and, and uh, members of the committee. Uh, yung sa number three po, yung returning migrants, uh, perhaps one silver lining dito sa pandemic is na enhance yung database ng returning OFWs. Uh, currently, we have around 500,000 plus in our database of returning OFWs in the course of the pandemic, which is tumatakbo na po ng more than one year. So, ang, ang, ang nangyayari po ngayon ay, halimbawa, to give an example, because of this database ng returning OFWs in the pandemic, ay nakikita po ng, halimbawa, DOH, Bureau of Quarantine, uh, in terms of yung monitoring, yung health conditions, at yung swap testing ng ating OFWs, uh, yung pong uh, uh, DLG, at yung mga LGUs naka-enroll po so that they can also be adequately informed the LGUs about the returning OFWs, the respective constituencies. And then, yun pong ating, uh, 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 in terms of yung reintegration, uh, we're already currently reaching out to agriculture and trade and industry, the departments, and also uh, of the possibility of uh, reaching out to TESDA. We're currently working on that, Mr. Chair, para po maagapan yung pangangailangan ng, ng uh, data mula sa mga ehensya na banggit ko at mabigyan ng intervention in terms of reintegration. Hindi rin ho namin nakakalimutan yung comment ni Senator Aini nung budget hearing namin kung saan na po point out ni Senator Aini yung need na iduktong din yung aming database sa employment facilitation, yung mga job portal. So uh, just to assure the good senator, now this is currently ongoing. We are reaching out to the relevant agencies in the DOLE as well as out those outside the DOLE para po ma-address yung employment needs, hindi lang po yung negosyo, kundi yung empleyo na options, na portals na pwedeng puntahan ng OFW. So all told, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, this is a work in progress, but but again, the silver lining is na e enhance yung sharing ng databases natin, at uh, we are ready in a step in a step in the right direction along these lines. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, uh, Admin Hans. Uh, can we hear from uh, the Department of Foreign Affairs regarding this uh, particular issue? Because um, uh, if I get it right, as I listen uh, very attentively to what uh, admin hands and our ILAB representative mentioned a while ago, it's still work in progress, uh, finalizing, etc. How about DFA? Uh, where are we on this? Um, Your Honor, uh, the DFA has data, of course. We send our, that to our biannual report to Congress. However, the Migrant Workers Act of 1995 contemplates an integrated data for all government agencies on migration. That to date is still inexistent. Um, and that is one of the goals to have one DOFIL so that um, the data can be put together from all agencies consist uh, in the migration team. Because 
um, Dole and its agencies have their data. DFA, ha we have our own data, and CFO have their own. But as to one single data collection, uh, we do not have that at, at the moment. I think it's because precisely because we are different agencies, Your Honor. Um, I also like to point out that in the Global Compact for Migration, one of our commitments is to have uh, proper data, which to um, and a consolidate consolidated data which we do not have at the moment. And uh, um, I just like to uh, very briefly, Your Honor, um, as to the importance of the field, since we already adopted the Global Compact for Migration, there are many provisions there unfair and ethical recruitment, where it says that uh, in the, on the question of uh, uh, Senator Binay a while ago, as the, the employer pays principle, that nobody has to pay for overseas employment. Um, it's one of the principles there that uh, has to be also enhanced. And since in an, it's an extraordinary time that um, needs an extraordinary measure, DOFIL should be able to um, address not only the um, the pandemic, Your Honor, but also how to begin when, when things go back to normal. Thank you, Your Honor. Well, thank you, uh, Yusek Sara, but uh, I cannot help also but uh, again be uh, disappointed that uh, when you talk about data sharing, it has been almost 11 years, uh, Your Honor, since the enactment of RA 10022 amending our Migrant Workers Act. Sadly, our uh, agencies have not successfully implemented this uh, shared government information system. And this is the reason perhaps why we should also uh, push for this measure to, to, to have a uh, and build a department because of our because our agencies are merely not coordinating with each other. You know? So we can have a focus. Um, last issue that I'd like to uh, raise on the uh, post uh, uh, deployment uh, part of our hearing. On the average, let me ask POEA, on the average, how long does it take for uh, POEA to, to evaluate the document submitted by direct hire and agency hired applicants? I mean, um, what, what part of the uh, pre-employment or pre-departure process takes the longest for a client to complete uh, gusto natin malaman kung uh, meron tayong mga programs para mapabilis ito. Kasi oh, tinitignan natin itong, if I may show you this particular slide, itong uh, checklist uh, requirements for direct hire application for land-based OFWs. Napakadami ho, no? Yung phase one, labing dalawa po yan. From passport to visa to Iba-iba uh, ho, diploma, transcript of records, PRC license, curriculum vitae, etc. You have uh, phase two, uh, apat po yan, valid medical certificate, pre-employment orientation seminar, pre-deployment orientation seminar, POEA clearance. Tapos yung number four, uh, I mean, labing anim po yan, eh, no? sir. Pag tinitignan po natin, ah, uh, Alam niyo kung ako yung aplikante at uh, mahina-hina ang loob ko, titignan ko ho ito at nakakarinig ka ng mga fixers around you, eh baka hindi ka na pumunta sa ganitong proseso at maghanap ka ng fixer at maging illegal uh, worker ka na lang no, sa ibang bansa. Uh, do, we, do we even na uh, evaluate this? And again, going back to my, 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 my question, yung average po, no, how long does it take for... Uh, uh, the agency, ng POEA, to evaluate the documents submitted by direct hire and uh, agency hired applicants. Uh, Admin Olalia. Yeah, may I reply, uh, Your Honor? Before I reply on this uh, process cycle time, may I uh, refer back to the database integration? I'm happy to uh, share, Your Honor, that uh, POEA has an existing database sharing agreement with the Bureau of Immigration. Lahat po ng umaalis nating OFW na may OEC, those who are regular and documented, goes to the Bureau of Immigration, shows their OEC, at lahat po yun natatrack po natin. Kaya po yung bilang ng mga umaalis po nating OFW are properly documented and we have the exact numbers. Real time po ito, Your Honor. Real time. Yes, and I Real hope time. hindi lang po sa Bureau of Immigration because hindi yun ang... Uh, in envision ng uh, batas na ating uh, ipinasa po dito sa Kongreso. Sige, yeah, please yeah. proceed. Okay. 
with respect to the process cycle time of uh, our direct hires, agency hires, and government hires, we are happy also to report, Your Honor, that we are under an ISO 9001-2015. Lahat po ng, ng, ng uh, process flow po niyan is uh, nakakoordinate po lahat yan sa aming ISO. So we are being uh, assessed every now and then. Ang average po niyan, Your Honor, is seven days. No, Once na may nag-apply po sa aming direct hire division, yung pong pagpoproseso ng lahat ng papers takes at least seven days, more or less po. Yun pong ating agency hire, we're also happy to note that we already launched an online uh, processing of all our uh, deployment, except for those that involves manual evaluation like HSWs and low skill. Doon po sa C-base natin, meron din pong online facility lahat ng mga running agencies. Mabilis na po ang pagpoproseso at pagde-deploy po ng ating mga seafarers in coordination with the principle that we have to establish a green lane of deployment for both land-based and sea-based, Your Honor. Thank, thank you, Admin Olalia. No? The, the, the bottom line of our hearing today is to ensure that we'll be able to uh, serve our uh, overseas Filipinos, particularly our OFWs, in uh, the best way possible. No? But if you will give us seven days to verify, uh, one week po, para matignan itong mga documents na nire-require po natin. And at the same time, if you look at the, the requirements, for example, diploma tra and transcript of records, uh, i-verify mo yung diploma and transcript of records, pero na-verify -ve mo din yung isang hiningi mong requirement na NC2 and PRC license. Kung may PRC license ka, ba, di dapat na-check na rin ang PRC bago nakapag-exam yan, na meron silang diploma at uh, transcript of records. Uh, you go to another point here, curriculum vitae, resume. Kailangan to with all these uh, requirements. What does that have to do with curriculum vitae, resume, with all these requirements? Don't you think that this is uh, way too much, uh, Admin Olalia? I mean, do you even uh, evaluate itong mga uh, checklist requirements natin? Your Honor, under the ease of doing business, nagkaroon po kami ng uh, technical working group to study on how to lessen the bureaucracy in the processing of uh, the deployment of our OFWs. And uh, ito po ang goal namin, uh, pabilisin ang deployment. Kaya po at the start of uh, the Duterte administration and upon the instruction of our Labor Secretary, nilaunch po namin yung one-stop service center for OFWs. Meaning to say, lahat po ng inter-agencies that deals with the deployment process are housed under one roof para mapabilis po at mapa, mapadali yung pag-issue ng ating OEC. So this is a continuing process for us in order to uh, give an efficient delivery of our services. Yeah. Your Honor. Uh, so I hope, uh, I, if I'm getting it correct, this is a work in progress. We are evaluating and uh, we wanted to make sure na Ito mga nakalista po dito, ito yung mga talagang kailangan, no? At uh, kung mapapabilis po natin itong uh, verification, uh, we would uh, appreciate it. I have a lot of uh, questions pa, but uh, the, the session hall would need to be uh, vacated for uh, for uh, cleaning before the session. Uh, let me uh, thank again everyone uh, here with us, uh, still with us uh, online, our uh, secretaries. Uh, who participated, of course, our uh, Senate Minority Floor Leader, Senate Majority Floor Leader, Senator Aimee Marcos. Uh, if there are any other uh, comments, and uh, uh, I, I can see uh, some uh, resource persons uh, who are still with us who might wanted to uh, say something, but uh, please Chairman? feel free to uh, give your position, uh, paper, and uh, uh, anything that you would like to add up. Uh, with regard to uh, what we have discussed today and in the coming uh, hearings. Yes, the Majority Leader is uh, raising his hand. Thank majority you. Leader, please. Yes, thank you, Chairman. First of all, I want, I want to thank you for calling for this hearing. Uh, you have uh, really been steadfast in pushing for uh, the welfare of our overseas Filipino workers. We want to put that front and center. And uh, also maybe uh, in the succeeding hearings, I know you split this up uh, Chairman, to three hearings. I believe one is for all the government agencies. That's today. And I believe on the next hearing, you'll have other stakeholders. 
uh, maybe request lang uh, the cabinet secretaries or those who have uh, authority from their departments who can answer uh, on the succeeding meetings to attend because there might be concerns from uh, other uh, stakeholders. For example, OFWs themselves talking about uh, the problems that they're facing. We can also uh, be able to ask that follow-up question with the departments in charge on what they're trying to do to correct this, uh, Mr. Chair, if that's all right. In the yes, for the succeeding uh, years. Yes, we will do that. Thank you very much, uh, Majority Floor Leader. And as earlier mentioned, we divide this into three. Doesn't necessarily mean that there will only be three hearings. It can uh, be extended. Uh, pwede rin uh, matapos or makover natin lahat in, 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 in two uh, hearings. But uh, right now, even the uh, we talk about the uh, uh, pre-deployment processes, mukhang uh, may mga ilang uh, questions pa po tayo. But uh, next hearing, of course, we will uh, uh, invite also uh, different OFW uh, associations and uh, we have uh, gotten their uh, position papers and yung mga suggestions po nila. We will also tackle that and uh, we'll, 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 uh, we'll start uh, tackling also itong uh, deployment, no? itong uh, welfare, legal and financial assistance to OFWs, especially distressed, dis displaced OFWs, yung okay. monitoring um, working conditions of uh, workers' uh, regulation of foreign recruitment agencies abroad, etc. So yun naman po yung uh, uh, pagtutuunan natin ng pansin. And of course, yung hindi pa po natin na uh, uh, ilang na-touch doon sa pre-deployment. And then yung third part po, yung uh, uh, syempre yung uh, post-deployment. And we're, we're, we're very interested doon sa reintegration program natin on the what we can do para masiguro natin na pagbalik ng ating mga kababayan, una, yung uh, polisiya na hindi natin sila gustong umalis ng bansa. At uh, pangalawa, yung pag-alis nila, we make sure na makakatulong din sila pagbalik nila, yung uh, transfer of technology, etc. I can see Senator uh, uh, Tolentino raising his hand. Yes, Senator yes, Tolentino, you're Chairman. recognized. Uh, just a query directed to the DFA. When do we expect the paper uh, as to the proposal on how to strengthen the bill, Mr. Chairman? I'm sorry, uh, Senator Tolentino, you're directing your question to... To DFA. When do we expect the paper? Okay, DFA, uh, Yusek Sara. Um, your Honor, we are going to uh, submit, if uh, with the indulgence of the of the Chair, within the week, Your Honor. Would that, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Well, in, in closing, let me uh, say na na tayo po ay natutuwa sa araw na ito at uh, muli natin napag-usapan ang uh, mga mahalagang bagay na, na mga concerns po ng ating mga kababayan na uh, outside the country, not only our overseas Filipino workers but uh, overseas uh, Filipinos. Nakakalungkot lang pong makita noon ang uh, walang humpay na paalamanan ng ating mga kababayan sa NAIA pero lalo na po ngayong uh, nagbabalik bayan sila, walang kaanak na sumasalubong Halos walang dalang pasalubong at walang katiyakan na makakabalik pa po abroad. Oo nga po, hindi naman halos naapektuhan ng pandemya ang remittances noong 2020, pero napapaisip po tayo kung bakit. Dahil ba mas marami ang biglang nakauwi o nag-alala yung mga kamag-anak na nasa abroad kaya nagpadala? Ganito pa rin kaya ngayong 2021 at uh, uh, sa mga susunod na taon. Again, isa po sa... Bawat sampung Pilipino ay nasa iba yung dagat. Ang one-fourth po ng ating labor force ay mga OFWs. Ang laki po ng ambag nila sa ating national pride at lalo na sa ekonomiya. Kaya mahirap pong hindi sabihin hindi kailangan ng hiwalay na ahensya o bureau o authority o departamento for overseas Filipinos na tututok po 24-7 sa lahat ng concerns ng ating mga kababayan. That's why we probably need uh, the DOFIL to address Five R's, red tape, regulation, recruitment, repatriation, and reintegration. So para po mangyari ito, ulitin ko po, ang gusto po natin mangyari sa DOFIL ay hindi lang parang lipat bahay, hindi lang relabeling exercise, hindi lang pagpapalit ng karatula ng pangalan. Dapat po itong bigyan ng mandato to amalgate uh, functions, gaya ng sinasabi po natin about the three types of attaches na dapat mailagay natin under one office at iba pang overlapping functions na binanggit po ng ating mga kasamahan dito sa Senado. Itatanong ko po muli, 
Kailangan po ba talaga o napapanahon po ba talaga na magtatag tayo ng bagong ahensya para sa mga Filipinos overseas? Kailangan po ba talaga ng department o simple authority lang? Gaya ng sinasabi ni uh, Senator Aimi, yung pong mga different models that we talk about, yung Nepal, uh, yung Sri Lanka at yung uh, uh, India na banggit po natin. Mapag-aralan po natin gusto at uh, makita po natin what is uh, best for us. Let me emphasize Now that the President himself has certified this measure as an urgent measure, we are duty-bound to push for DOFIL not to encourage migration for work, but to address the plight of our kababayans abroad, and most especially those coming home because of uh, the pandemic. Sa mga kababayan po natin, uh, sa apat na sulok ng daigdig na nakatutok sa pagdidig na ito, maraming salamat. Uh, hindi po natin layuning gawing polisiya ang pagpapaalis sa ating mga kababayan. Gusto po natin na dito po kayo sa Pilipinas makapagtrabaho, magtrabaho kasama ang inyong pamilya at mahal sa buhay. Subalit alam po natin na hindi ito makatotohanan sa ngayon, ngunit narito po tayo para gumawa ng paraan para uh, mangyari yung ating pangarap. Kaya gusto ko pong uh, ipagdiinan muli na may limitasyon po ang panukalang batas na ito. May mandatory review after 10 years at responsibilidad po ng inyong Kongreso at Senado na i-review po kung kailangan pa ito Kung hindi na ay i-abolish din ang, itinat ang itatatag na DOFIL. So muli maraming salamat sa bawat isa na naririto at uh, pagpalain tayong lahat ng ating Panginoong Diyos. This uh, committee hearing, joint committee hearing is hereby suspended. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Thank you dear colleagues. Thank you Sec. Uh, Carlo.